Okay, well with all that said guys, it is time. Let's get this started. Continue. The load times in this game aren't bad at all. It's nice. Okay, so this is interesting. We were in our house when I saved it. However, because of the checkpoint system in this game, it took us out. And there was a noise that we heard at our house. So I'm wondering what that noise was. We're on the opposite side now. <laughs> I think we were supposed to discover the noise downstairs. So I guess we're probably going to see what's going on as soon as we enter the house. Jerry, maybe. look. We've got a parcel here. Hurry up and let's see what's inside. Okay, that must be it. We just got a parcel. Where's our mail go? Is it over here? This might be it. Okay. Oh, wait, is this the old one? No, I think this is something new. Okay, invitation from Vogel. He's inviting us again for something. Dear Mr. Holmes, I'm waiting for you at Kurt Manchio's mansion at, on Turquoise Lane across from Cordona Abbey in northern Grand Syrah. Uh, come at once. If inconvenient, come anyway. <laughs> That's cute. Always your friend, VV. P.S. I sent you the appropriate outfit for this place to avoid any unnecessary complications. I hope it fits. An invitation that comes with a mask. We can't miss this, Sherry. Nice. It's a... Uh... What do you call it? Uh, like a, a masked ball kind of thing? I'm not sure. And Alex, you still want the same amount of the main video? Hopefully the shorts help gain new people. 100%! That's a good idea to do kind of a combination of both, Alex. And Forsaken, people that go out of the way to fish your location are the worst, and you have a few regulars that are determined to learn the city you live in, and it makes your teeth chatter. It sucks, doesn't it, Forsaken? It happens. There's not much you can do about it. It's almost impossible to wipe all of your, you know, information off the internet, but I'm not sure if we completely explored everything we needed to. There was a room up here we went into, not that one, and we were kind of just finishing up exploring it. I think it was on this side. Oh, that's such a good game, Waffle Master, and a good game to, to stream. The alien isolation is really creepy. Uh, wasn't it on this side? Maybe not. I'm all lost. Or was it downstairs, actually? Maybe the room we were in was downstairs. Here we go. This is the room that we were exploring before at the end of the last stream. Hey, Jada, what's going on? Uh, you're still at school, just having free time so you can watch you. How much free time do you have, Jada? Mother said this was among the hunting trophies of a Scottish Viscount. Is that a... like a deer? So he tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling if it were actually true. That looks like a vampire deer or something. Oh yes, the Mycroft drawer, that's right. I remember there was one other thing in this area we wanted to check out. And I think it was right over here? We probably need to select it in our handy dandy notebook. Let's see. We have one that mentions the drawer, hidden treasure. That might be it. Let me try pinning this. No, I think that's something else. Master of Unlocking. I think this is the one. Oh, you had to do some schoolwork today? What uh, kind of homework did you have today, Jada? I'm doing great. Here it is. This is the right one. Yeah, let's check this out. Ah memory comes back. We snuck about watching him. Oh, here comes our he memories. closed the drawer and went to the hall. We were like two shadows crawling behind him. We have to find the next set of clues. Here we go. Is that a fort? It looks like they made a little blanket fort. That's cool. Oh, like astronomy, Jada. That's a super fun subject. And it looks like it goes this way. There's kind of a trail to follow. He opened the door to the postman and they exchanged documents. 
if it was a real postman, of course. Oh no, Phantasma, now you're talking statistics. <laughs> you can tell any story you want with numbers. Okay, then, uh, where else is this going? My controller is kind of vibrating right around here, but it can't quite tell. Oh, I saw the line. It keeps jumping in and out. There it goes. You have to be standing, like, exactly on the line. Honestly, Jada, mostly just playing this and also playing Elden Ring. <laughs> I finally finished Elden Ring. It's a great game. The painting on the wall was slightly a tilt. He stopped and straightened it. All this to open up a drawer. This is a complicated uh, story with this drawer. Okay, so footsteps. Then he threw some logs into the fire and sat in his armchair to read. It's as boring now as it was then. I'm sorry, Sherry, but I think that's it. Oh, no. There's got to be more to it than that. Wait, John, we never use the fireplace in the mornings. What if... Oh, what if he hid something in there? So you were talking about how to properly make it the correction that's needed just to correct some numbers that were off in your... Uh... I guess, uh, reports or something. Oh, there's something there. Is that the key? I think this is what we're looking for. Yep. What else do we need? A bit of juniper in the fireplace created a soothing atmosphere. It's the little things, isn't it? Well, that's nice. I actually didn't know that. Oh, are they doing that, Jada? I mean, if you guys have numbers that are high where you're living, it's actually still a good idea. It's not bad to wear a mask if you need to. I heard footsteps upstairs a second ago. Wait, do we have an attic here? Oh, that's what it was. We heard footsteps. I was thinking maybe it was just the package being delivered. I know where I live in California, the numbers are starting to go up as well. They haven't mandated masks, but I have a feeling it's gonna happen pretty soon. Okay, let's try to open this up. We made it. So what's there? It's like booze. What is this? Royal Lochnagar Old Scotch Whiskey. Single malt whiskey. My cross favorite. Do you guys like whiskey? <laughs> I'm not a big hard liquor drinker. Gifted by Queen Victoria herself. For me, I will usually mix it with something. I rarely drink hard liquor just by itself. This is a present from the Queen. For some reason, the controller is vibrating like crazy on the screen. Half a bottle of fine single malt whiskey, Mycroft's favorite drink. We found it locked in the drawer of the desk in the curiosity cabinet among a pile of important documents. Remarkably, it seems the whiskey was a gift of Her Majesty Queen Victoria herself. Oh, thank goodness it finally stopped rumbling. Oh, Scout, thank you for the lurk, dude. I appreciate that. Welcome. And you don't like any alcohol stuff? If you don't like it, we would tell them to stay away. It's good. You don't need it. <laughs> I enjoy drinks, but uh, just more calories. If you don't like it, that's great. I like drinking soda. Like, caffeine's fun. Soda's sweet. It's good. Terrible for you. If you don't like it, even better. Otto Richter. Oh, this is the uh, doctor. This one is rather thick. Mycroft can be truly dogged in his research. Oh, nice. So here's what our brother researched about the shady doctor. Otto Richter is 45 years old, born to a respected family in Bern, Switzerland. Unmarried, no heirs. Medical practitioner, graduated from the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Graduation was postponed a year due to a minor scandal on one of his placements. Parents died of cholera in 1863. Only remaining family is a half-brother, Claus. Hmm... Uh, age 35, present whereabouts of Claus Richter unknown, last seen on Cordona. Oh, we might be able to find his brother if we look. Dossiers on the most influential people on Cordona. Mycroft always had a habit of building files on everyone he met. Oh, that makes sense, Phantasma. Yeah, you have to put a proper weight on your numbers, otherwise it totally skews everything. 
Okay, I think we've completed that that quest. Is that why it has a check mark on it? Or is there something else we have to do with this? I think we're done. Okay, so if we look back at our major tasks, it looks like the next thing we have is this sacrificial lamb is one of the main story things. So we should probably go to that invitation. Let's make that the major one. Um, so we're going to someplace else. We're going to a mansion on Turquoise Lane across from Cordona Abbey in Northern Grand Saray. Let's check that out once we get out there. Oh no. <laughs> You're giving me nightmares about all this math stuff, Phantasma. And I did pretty good in math. I had to learn a lot for my computer science degree. Can't say I really enjoyed it. Math is fun to a point, and then it gets so complicated that everything you're ever going to do in real life in math, you will use a computer or a calculator. However, they make you do it by hand. At least they did when I was learning it, which makes zero sense because there's way more room for error, and you wouldn't do that in a workplace. You would always use a formula in a computer or calculator or something. Okay, so Grand Saray, this is the right place. The streets were... Uh, Turquoise Lane, Cordona Abbey. Let's see, Turquoise Lane. Bonanza. Silent Way, Silent Hill, Queen Street. I'm not seeing Turquoise anywhere. Did I go too far north? Oh, I'm in the wrong area. Okay, I went too far north. This, there's like a line right here you can't see unless I zoom out a little bit. Casino Boulevard. Where is it? Am I missing it? Am I that blind? This area is actually kind of small. There it is, Turquoise Lane. Okay, oh, that's really small. Turquoise Lane, and I thought I said Cardona something. Oh, there's Cordona Abbey. Oh, so it wasn't a street name. Cordona Abbey is actually just a building. Okay, so right around here, we're going to find it. So let's go ahead and put our marker down. Start making our way over there. Wait, what's an R fan, Phantasma? <laughs> no one makes you do statistics by hand anymore. Thank goodness. It was a thing. It was definitely a thing. Actually, I can probably teleport a bit closer. I can't get all the way there, but... Just a little bit closer. And you might head off. You see you soon. Oh, take care, Jada. Thank you for dropping in and saying hi. Um, I see you really like math, but you took AP Calculus virtually while you were having one of the worst years of your mental health. Oh, no, 99. I definitely understand that. You can take something that you normally really enjoy and ruin it by putting it in a bad setting. And that sucks. It can definitely turn you off some things you used to really enjoy. Sometimes you'll get back into it if you give it enough time, but it can definitely like ruin certain things for you. <laughs> oh, nice. I've never, I don't think I've ever used that before. I'd probably remember it if I did, huh? I mean, I'm sure they do. It just depends on what they're actually, what they need it for. Holy cow! <laughs> Scout! <laughs> Bad Scout, what are you doing? Three months subscribed to the channel, Scout. Thank you so much, dude. I really appreciate that. I give you guys all some tokens for that. Holy cow, has it already been three months, Scout? Thank you very much, dude. I'm curious. What was the first, the, the game that we were playing when you first discovered this channel, Scout? I'm trying to think, what were we doing about three months ago? Remember, <laughs> time by so fast. We might have been, no, I was going to say, were we working on that, um... Danganronpa? Maybe. I think there was a game before that one, maybe. Okay, so only three years of following. Oh, so if you've been here three years of following, were we playing, um, uh, what was it called? Uh, Detroit Become Human when you first followed Bad Scout? Or how did you discover us? <laughs> I will avoid it like the plague, Phantasma. Nice catches, Alex and Phantasma. Good job. Okay, so it should be just right up here. <laughs> I totally understand, Scout. 
I know, honestly, sometimes I can hardly remember what year I've streamed some games. My memory is terrible, but you know how it is. Okay, let me double check this instructions. Okay, um, across from Cordona Abbey on Turquoise Lane. So we're on, it should be right here, this building, right? Yeah, we just have to find the proper entrance. Oh my lord. Yeah, you see something like that and it's just too intimidating, Phantasma. You just don't want to even touch it. Okay, so I can't go that way. Oh no! I'm stuck! Help! Help me! I can't get off! <laughs> what do I do? There's no jump button! <laughs> I need an adult! Help me! <laughs> okay, uh, there's got to be something we can do. Get out of this animation. I might have to fast travel to get out of this. Oh, we got it! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, good. Just the, the gravitational force was too great on that staircase. <laughs> that's the first real bug I think I've encountered in this game. Besides like some weird graphical glitches, like where our coat was stuck on our back. That's not a big deal. Okay, I think... Oh yeah, this is the party. Oh, we should probably change, huh? So we have it in our wardrobe, I believe. Oh, Prince of Darkness. Is that our new costume? I'll wear that. Um, and then this creepy mask. <laughs> the description for this, a normal mask for normal people. Are you guys normal? Because <laughs> apparently I sure as hell isn't. Um, anything else we need here? And uh, we shouldn't put the gang tattoo on. That's a pretty good costume too, but I'm gonna go with what we got. That's cool. I like it. Could you help me? I have nothing to hide, sir, but I've never heard of this. Just thought I'd ask somebody, but I guess we have the entire invitation as a topic. Welcome, sir. I do hope you enjoy yourself. You don't even know who I am. I could be a serial killer wandering in here with a mask. Like, you should really check for ID or something. Ooh, a cup of tea. What kind of tea do you drink, Scout? Enjoy the evening, sir. There is still plenty of time before the grand finale. Grand right. finale? What the heck? Is this like the Playboy Mansion? What's going on here? And the piano player's playing blindfolded? We gotta take a picture of that for therapy. Oh no, she's gonna die, isn't she? Apparently I didn't read the uh, instructions or the invitation closely enough, Phantasma. Chamomile tea, that's the one that kind of relaxes you and helps you sleep, right? Oh, that's cool, Scout. Like, where you got, like, loose leaves. Cool about these people here. Can you help me gather information about Cordona's elite? <laughs> yeah. Elite. I know what information he wants. <laughs> 99. Imagine being normal. Couldn't be me. And see you. I'm reading your message right now, Alex. You wanted to learn it, uh, but on year three of uni out of four, your second year of Japanese, you're in such a bad place that it got ruined for you. You still want to learn, but you're terrified to start again. It, it creates this like mental block where even something that you enjoyed, like when you were enjoying learning Japanese, it makes it almost traumatic because now you only associate bad memories about it. I totally get that, Alex. That sucks. You have such pretty hands. What can you do with them? Well, in her... That's a weird compliment. In her defense, that is the only part of me that's showing is my hands. And my eyes. You could have compliment. Whoa. Whoa. You could have complimented my eyes. <laughs> that was kind of perfect. As soon as I said, you could have complimented my eyes, he goes, no. That was great. The camera's going crazy here. Because her head's moving. Can I get a drink? Is this familiar to you? I have nothing to hide, sir. No, you cannot. But I've never heard of this. <laughs> Sorry, Fantasma. <laughs> okay, so let's double check our uh, 
Oh, we have a new thing here. John asked me to look for information that he might use to write an article exposing the local elite. So let's go ahead and tag that now. We're looking for an interesting scoop. Oh, I heard the finale will be splendid. Oh, here's why I need a screenshot. This will be a very interesting picture. Uh, F12, I think? Yeah, that's it. It's Steam. I always forget that. Do not distract me. It's not easy to play blindfolded. <laughs> that's a good answer. I like that. My goodness, Sherlock. They made a blood fountain. No, John, it's definitely not blood, just wine. Gore, is it a guess? That's actually really cool. <laughs> You look important. I need a rest from my insane wife. So yeah, sex party. Coming here to cheat on his wife. I guarantee you will have a good time. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on moseying over here. Uh-oh, what do we discover? Sherlock! Friend! Was oh, that Vogel? I wasn't sure you'd come. Werner, I uh, see you are not yourself. The more time you spend here in Cordona, the more I feel it my duty to bring you into our world and show you all we have to offer. And what is on offer today? Pleasure, indulgence, relief and relaxation. You've earned some time for yourself, have you not? Those who know me would say I'm incapable of it. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Sounds like I refuse him. to believe there is anyone permitted to know Sherlock Holmes. Huh. You may be right. Then free yourself from inhibition and expectation. The night is young, and so are the guests. You should try to enjoy both. It's not healthy for handsome men to spend every night alone, and certainly not in a house filled with such melancholic memories. I must admit, my travels have proven more taxing than expected. I'm less confident in my life and myself. A time of relaxation seems a distant dream. So can I tempt you with a physical aid to your moral consolations? There's wine, of course, and something to smoke, or perhaps an artificial paradise? Yes, something more spiritual, a potentiator to sharpen the mind. A 7% solution of, well, that'd be telling, but you must try it. They're both no. That would be pointless. That would be reckless. I guess. <laughs> I don't know which one I like more. <laughs> They're both true. Both true. Let's see. And Phantasma. He said he needs a rest from his insatiable wife. Meaning that his wife is off. Happy. Oh, yeah. Because he needs the break, right? That makes more sense, actually. Oh, that sounds delicious, 99. As long as the honey doesn't keep you up from the sugar, right? Don't put too much. Let's say that would be reckless. My mind is my most valuable asset and a finely tuned instrument. I will not risk impeding its function. My ultimate duty is to provide the world with truth, and I do that perfectly well as is. Duty? You've never cared about that before. Of course I do. Exposing a lie, revealing a fact, that is a moral responsibility. <laughs> That's not morality. Morals are what happens afterwards when truth collides with consequence. Do you ever follow up on cases you solved? Do you ever see what happened next? Visit the victims? Ensure justice is served in the courts? No. And how do you choose where to direct your attention? Are there not deserving causes to which your brilliance could be applied but isn't? You ascribe me more power than I possess. I have a narrow skill set and work within that mandate. What occurs afterward is irrelevant. With every action or inaction, you place a finger on the scales of morality. Many in the city would see you as abdicating your responsibility. I, I haven't. Not me, of course. Morality is subjective, just like truth. There is little to be gained from indulging in it, and far better things to indulge in. Now I must insist on easing any burdens I've placed upon your shoulders. Show yourself a kindness, and try this rather delectable concoction. Oh no. <laughs> I'd rather take it for study, or I won't need it. I mean, that sounds like he's going to drink it almost <laughs> for study. 
But we should probably stick to our guns and say we don't need it. And that's really cool, Phantasma. I love that they have throwbacks to uh, older Sherlock Holmes. That's really uh, cool. Hey, welcome back, Scout. I love that, Alex. Relax and get late, Sherlock. Come. I am perfectly capable of coping with myself without medical assistance. Then I shall press you on it no further. But please, do not refuse my gift. Take it with you as a souvenir of this special night. Souvenir of what, exactly? But, all right, if only to put the matter to bed. And now, our evening begins in earnest. <laughs> I just remembered. I'm sorry, Sherlock. My mind's delightfully impaired. Please take this key. It opens the altar room, past the library. Weird. Pardon? Altar room? What now, Werner? Go quickly and find our Fabio. Only you can make him talk. I'll join you in a minute. What is he going on about? I feel like we're being set up for something. Let Fabio speak for himself. Oh, really, 99? I know, I always thought sugar can cause you to have like a burst of energy, but it's like very short lived, like much shorter than like caffeine or something. Oh, that's cool. I'm excited to play that game, Phantasma. I can't wait. So we probably need to change. Well, we still haven't done that one. Now, if it has the two hands class, Phantasma, that's like a um, a challenge from John, right? That's a little different. Let's see if we can find the altar room. Three out of how many? <laughs> how many people could have survived? Manchos had. See, did it say in the quest where it was? It just says to the altar room. It could be anywhere. It might be upstairs, actually. Let's see if we can go upstairs. Do you know what was here before Manchios' family? Oh, I should listen to this, huh? Find out the eerie history of the mansion. Okay, we have to pick the right ancestral home? No. Auction? Nah. Magic circle? Yes. Mysterious? Yes. Ruins? Yeah. No. No. Hey, there we go. Just keep trying it. It'll work eventually. Before Manchio's family, the mansion was owned by an occultist architect. He dedicated his life to conducting a powerful ritual from the forgotten tomb. But the ordinary magic circles proved too weak for it. That was why he built the mansion. A keen eye might notice that its shapes correspond with certain magical symbols, and some of the walls have cavities. One day, the architect simply disappeared. An ash stain on the floor was all that remained. Perhaps he was successful in his endeavor. That's creepy. That's <laughs> oh, what no. I like about this party. Bring me more dirt, Sherry. One more piece, and I can expose these base hedonists. Oh, good. We're helping him out with that quest as well, doing that. Oh, out of seven? It's still. That sounds like you saved 50% of the people. That's good. Oh, that's really cool, 99. And it also depends on the person, though, right? From what I've heard, like some people, caffeine. Curtains do not guarantee privacy. <laughs> you just and teleport there. You still there. need a crack, despite being ethereal. Um, but yeah, for some people, caffeine acts like what you'd expect caffeine to. For some people, caffeine is kind of a downer, and actually slows them down. Where alcohol, which is usually a downer, kind of acts more as like a stimulant. Oh, crap. See, I knew this was a trap. We shouldn't have come in here first. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, Alex. Just here this whole time. What timing? <laughs> okay, good. I can pause it for a moment. <laughs> that was funny. Alex Freeze Man. Let's see, you said you subbed two weeks ago, but it wants to say it's your anniversary. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. You know what? If it allowed you to sub kind of like twice for the price of one, Alex, that means double the tokens. I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you again very much, Alex. 23 months, almost two entire years subscribed to the channel. That is insane. And good luck in your meeting, Alex. I hope that goes well. Hope it's not too boring. Ooh, Alex, you got all three of those. That's fantastic. Good catch. Let's see here. Um, you lost two at the end, which kind of sucked, but you're committed to completing the playthrough no matter what. So you're playing through again to see if you can save those people. Good luck, Phantasma. I will play through it once, and whoever dies, that's my permanent story in that game, probably. Unless I play it again 
in another stream, maybe. I'm gonna keep that one tagged. What the hell's going on here? They said I should come up here and he'll talk to me. This whole thing was a setup. I think they're trying to make it look like I did this. A blunt force trauma may have suffered an internal hemorrhage. <laughs> it goes pretty quick, Alex, especially when you're subbed to the channel. You get that twice as fast. Oh, that's not too bad. I like that it's longer than the Dark Picture games, though. Oh, I have to do this. There we go. Tattoo covers a this mark. This crude tattoo partially covers a slave branding. Oh, interesting. Check out that knife. This golden handle has a blood stain on it. The dagger is heavy and sharp, but lacks balance. Well, yeah, it looks more ornamental than anything. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, uh, you could definitely probably feel it's a bigger budget than the last couple games they've done. This worm-like sigil has been drawn with his own blood. Ew, that's actually a pretty good drawing, though, <laughs> considering it's just blood with the finger. I don't know how they did it. We're missing two more things. The victim has clenched the fabric so firmly in his fist that it's nigh impossible to remove it. Oh, like a, what do they call that, rigor mortis, when you freeze up when you're dead? You know what they don't show you, and I'm not surprised? Maybe it's not true, but don't you, like, expel your bowels and stuff when you are dead? You don't see that very often in games. The wound is deep. A precise strike reached the heart. He died right here. Yeah, we need to get the hell out of here, right, Alex? We're going to be incriminated if people come in here while we're looking around. Oh, here he is. He looks pretty chill. Werner, care to explain what is going on here? On nights like these, it's not unusual for some attendees to get a little exuberant. What? It's part of the appeal. Unfortunately, it appears things have gotten out of hand. Yes, some are more prone to bend the rules of morality. That's murder. I doubt there's anything left to bend. Why did you not tell me immediately? We were chatting about trivial matters for some time. If I'm completely honest, Sherlock, I've consumed a rather potent cocktail of substances. My attention slips and drifts, but I'm glad I thought to call for you. You sent me a disguise. Oh dear, did I? Well, since I found the body, Mr. Mancios has agreed that you can investigate the matter. I promise my mind will behave itself going forward. All right, and pull yourself together, Werner. This is kind of weird. It, it almost seems like a complete setup, and the fact that he wasn't more, like, scared about the situation, he just told us, oh, this guy will talk to you. I think what he meant to say is that we can discover the truth, you know, as in, like, a dead body talking to you sort of thing, but sure didn't make it seem like there was something that bad going on. see. In 99, chemically, sugar is an energy source that is used more as a short term of energy. Yeah, it's kind of what I was saying earlier, but that type of energy is separate from uh, what's used in the sense of tiredness. It's more along the lines of sugar can give your body fuel to actually be able to function for a short period, while caffeine makes your brain feel more alert. So what you're saying, 99, is I need massive amounts of both, right? Got it. <laughs> okay, let's ask him what more. What is it about these nights that you were so eager to share with me? Well, they're not always in the evenings, but they are in the shadows. People gather to test their boundaries in a safe and consensual atmosphere. Often safe. with more stains than your typical crime scene. But that is the point. Who are we to judge? I suppose that's fair. What about today, then? Was anything different? Well, I was invited as a special guest. It was supposed to be a time of both divine and carnal pleasures. A scratch for every unconventional itch. I imagine you're reeling from your shattered expectations. On the contrary, there is still spectacle, stimulation, and release, merely in a different form. I like to let life entertain me. Or death. <laughs> so wait, is this his grand finale? I don't think it is. Maybe it is. True. And salt, Phantasma. You also actually need a decent amount of salt. Mr. Manchos is the owner of the manor, yes? And the host of Cordona's most memorable parties. He promises even the ugliest guest a partner for the night. And for the ones with more unconventional tastes, Mr. Manchios provides other services. What a caring person. You cannot begin to imagine. 
Nate, you came in at the perfect time. Well, maybe not this exact moment, but we just got invited, you can see we're wearing a mask, to a, uh, a basically a masked sex party, I guess you'd call it. All kinds of debauchery happening in the rest of the house. However, we were told to come to this room to talk to somebody, found him dead on this big kind of like stone tablet thing, skewered. So I don't think we're going to have that kind of fun tonight. Unfortunately. How you doing, Nate? It's good to see you. <laughs> well, it's not a John Cadia stream if we don't have some kind of cults, right? And I guess there's genitalia stuff happening somewhere else, too. How did you discover the body? Very In between guzzles of alcohol. I was set to perform in a fecundity ride with Fabio and came to inquire further. There was a staged ritual where he was to play the principle of life. And the rehearsal was unsuccessful? Ha! Huh. Who knows? <laughs> I found him alone on the altar, his blood dripping to the floor. And then? Then I called Mr. Manchios. He was panicking, so I told him about you. We left the room and locked the door. Then we were filling time. Waiting for you was stressful. We indulged in some simple comforts. Overindulged, perhaps. Simple comforts, huh? <laughs> Alex, it's the uh, holy trinity of John Cadia streams, right? <laughs> There's always cults in the games we play, Scout. Almost every single game. Were you well acquainted with Fabio, the victim? Everyone knew Fabio, or wanted to. His beauty was the talk of the island. Too handsome to go unnoticed. He was magnetic. Fat wallets fought for the privilege of having him. He offered the pleasures of performance and more. We get a lot of questions with this guy. What about the fertility ritual? There was something about Fabio being a principle of life. Fabio was supposed to portray the beauty of life's origin. Flowers, oil, not this travesty that seems straight out of the Inquisition. So this ritual is not the fertility rite. What was it meant to look like? It begins with a woman lying naked in a flower bed on the altar. She represents Gaia, the earth. As I cover her in oils, we chant for the principal. As our calls reach a climax, Fabio enters and copulates with her. After he finishes, I stab her with a dagger. That part's just pretend, of course. But the sure. intercourse is not. I did not expect you to be such a prude. Are you a virgin? It is nothing to be ashamed <laughs> of, but it would explain the color of your cheeks. The fertility rite marks the start of our festivities. The principle of life is beautiful, intimate, essential. It must not be stopped. <sighs> Yet it appears that someone did stop it. What about the naked woman? Can you tell me anything about her? Oh, yes, Matista. She's one of Fabio's compatriots and a performer, too. I haven't seen her today, actually. Um, I don't know how it happens, 99. I swear I don't, like, Google games with cults and make sure to add those to the list. I don't do that. <laughs> I was just kind of mentioning Phantasma because... I mean, we're always questioning at the start of these things, but I feel like we usually only get to answer, like, ask, like, two or three things, and that's it. We've been able to ask this guy, like, seven or eight things. When you discovered the body, was the door open? No, it was locked. Oh, that reminds me. It's a minor detail, but the first time I came to speak to Fabio, I left without entering, having been unable to open the door. You didn't have the key? No, I had it. Don't look at me like that. I was mostly sober. I suspect there was a key in the other side of the door, blocking the lock. That detail may very well be major, Werner. Well done. So you returned later only to find the lock was not blocked? Correct. After an hour had passed, I tried again and was able to unlock the door. That's when I discovered poor, handsome Fabio. Oh, poor, handsome Fabio. The police remain unaware of this tragic event? Some of them may be hiding behind their masks. They conceal many things. But we didn't want the authorities to create more problems. Besides, after a few cocktails, their incompetence will have soared to new heights. How do you know I even want the case? I promised you relaxation. If there's one thing I know about you, Sherlock, it's that nothing soothes you more than a good mystery. And that's right. That's actually very true. <laughs> I don't know. Something about this whole setup still seems really fishy to me, even with this Vogel guy. Good try, Alex. Although, every once in a while, 
you get that Capri Suns quote. It seems like it's the most common quote that pops up. The sign reminds me of the astrological symbol for Mars. Women are from Venus, men are from Mars. This one looks like a twisted symbol of Venus drawn in a hurry. Yep. This is kind of neat. It's like a acting set or something. <laughs> I love that one, Alex. I had to correct myself because I knew I was going to die again. And I'm sure I did. Oh, what do we got here? Handcrafted and luxurious cufflinks. There's also a note. For my Fabio, Manchos. There's a key right here. The key is similar to the one that Vogel gave me. It just says F. The capital F on the key fob might refer to Fabio. It's his own key? What a lucky guy. I guess because he's just so dang good looking, huh? Look at the shadow there. That's kind of interesting. It's supposed to be reflecting what we see. But as I turn left to right, there's like a black screen kind of moving back and forth too. Would you recognize me in one of these? I suppose not. I guess we'd recognize your voice, John. This is a different ritual. The ritual scenario. I found a scenario of some sort of ritual with a remark written at the beginning. It says, read and rehearse this rite, Mancios. The naked woman lies on the altar of a bed of flowers, symbolizing Mother Gaia. The one who leads the ritual oils the body of the woman to awaken her inner fertility. Participants should chant at this moment and call for the man who can please Mother Gaia. Then, the man who will impersonate the principle of life may come to engage in sexual congress with her. That'd probably be Fabio. And Mancio's note. Don't ignore the guest, Ma Matista, and stop boring them. They don't want to hear about your stupidities. They want to feel how beautiful they are and how generous you can be towards them. You are here to please and celebrate life. Remember, each guest paid a great deal to be with you, Mancios. And this is the, the woman I think he was talking about earlier that he hasn't seen today, right? I, I couldn't even fathom doing something like this, Phantasma. Yeah, to each their own. For some people, this How is like... How can anyone accept such behavior? A great weekend night. <laughs> for me, this is a nightmare. A useful tool for a disguise arsenal. Okay, that's everything over there. What do we got here? The picture is empty, but with puddles around it. Meaning it was probably recently used? Oh. Blood clots are adhered to the sides of the drain. Hmm. Good eye. I couldn't see that from here until it zoomed in. One of the coats is missing, too. Hey, Jada. Glad you made it home. Do you still have more homework to do, or are you done for the day? Identical to the robes the guests are wearing. And there was a wet handprint. Maybe meaning the same person that was using the robe also used this water pitcher? Oh, nice. Free time, Jada. Awesome. Oh, no, Alex. I hate that. Especially when you start to put time aside and you stop what you're doing to do a meeting. And then it comes out that it's not even happening. Props, decorations, and tools for a more detailed set. You know, I feel so bad for Andy. She works from home and she gets to sleep in a little bit more than I do. But every Wednesday, I think it is, she has a meeting early in the morning. So we we wake up close to the same time. So she gets ready, all set for the meeting. And then it seems like half the time it's canceled. Every time that happens, she's so upset because she's like, I could have been sleeping. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. Oh, what's in here? Bloody similar to the guest robes. robes, apart from the bloodstains. Interesting. They did not do a good job of disposing of that evidence. We go on this door too. Oh, that's awesome! How are you liking working from home, Nate? Are you working from home one hundred percent of the time? Yeah, we haven't checked this room out. What about a quick pillow fight? 
<laughs> you know, pillow fights are cute when you're a kid. When you're an adult and are just more fully grown and you got like some of those heavy duty pillows, they're like straight up dangerous. You could knock someone out in a pillow fight. Oh, that's great, dude. That's so exciting. I can't wait to hear more about it when you start, Nate. Um, do you, do you kind of know what you'll be doing? Can you talk about it at all? Oh, we got some more clues here. Yeah, it's something right here. An open wound spoiled the carpet. I'm not sure how old that is. Oh, even the wine looks like it got blood stains on it. Blood. A sturdy bottle met a not so sturdy human. It didn't break only because it was unopened. So bashed someone's head in with the uh, wine bottle, maybe caused that blood too. Oh, those like really decorative pillows, Phantasma. That could really rip up your face. <laughs> Let's see. In Jade of Tomorrow, there's this thing at school. It's called Wake Hair Day and Mufti. Is that what that is? So you can wear whatever you want and just have like crazy hair or something. I don't know why it's called Wake Hair Day. But that sounds like when schools would sometimes have like a pajama day or something. Everybody just goes in really uh, comfortably. Oh. I see what you're getting at, Phantasma. Yeah, no thank you. No thank you. Why don't people tidy up after themselves? I bet the brand of this is important. Enough cigars to burn down the entire mansion. Or we'll find out who was smoking. Might have been involved with this, because there was a lit cigarette there too. <laughs> True. Imagine coming here in a uh, with a black light, you know, trying to look at all the stains, Phantasma. It'd be everywhere. Let's double check. Oh my goodness, look at all these new clues we got. Uh, we should switch to this. Whoops. We should switch to this, the smoking lounge. Okay, I think I missed something in here. Oh yeah, there's a few things. Look at all these things. A bloody handprint on an armchair. The wounded person was here for some time. Honestly, there's so much stuff going on in here. I think you would just inhale STDs through osmosis being in this room. There was something else right over here. More blood stains. A person leaned against the doorframe. They left a smudged trail of blood. There appeared to be no further traces leading to the altar. So, oh, Sherry, that's fun. Do you have any ideas about the case? Perhaps, perhaps. I think I can deduce what happened here. Ooh, time to put it together. Um, Jada, so like whoever has the craziest hair wins. Look at John swimming in there. I wouldn't even trust that water. People probably had sex in there too. Um, what's the prize if you have the craziest hair? <laughs> it's pretty cute, isn't it? Hey, um, I'm gonna try to go to where it started. Looks like there's some over here. Not sure what it is. That's a really fun idea, though. That'll be a fun day at school. Okay, so it looks like somebody's reaching up, but that doesn't look like the handprint could have made it from that angle. What else we got? That looks more likely. Just based on how that handprint is right there. <laughs> a lolly? You mean like a lollipop? It's got to be something better than that. That's probably correct. We did see somebody get nailed with a wine. That looks like a stab. I don't think that's correct. I think they got beat upside the head with the wine bottle. They're getting dragged over here. I think there might be more this way. Harold the Giraffe. I know Jeffrey the Giraffe. I don't know Harold the Giraffe. <laughs> Jeffrey's from uh, Toys R Us. If, uh, is that a thing anymore? I thought I heard Toys R Us might be coming back. Oh yeah, back here. He might be trying to wash off his blood on his hand. 
Do we know somebody used the pitcher? What's the other option? Oh, no. I think it's the killer that did that. They are coming back. I wasn't sure if it was going to be like online only or if they might have uh, some kind of more of a store presence again. Okay, if the killer's washing himself off, he probably also hid those dirty clothes. This is a pretty big one. It's spacious. Okay, we did those two. Let's check this one. Then he puts that in after he's dropped the body off. That's not right. <laughs> they have a TikTok. I mean, that's how that's how we do business now, right? You gotta have a TikTok. So who is Harold the giraffe, uh, Jada? And then he leaves. Or holds it closed. I think it's gonna be this one. Because Vogel... No, not that one. Vogel told us earlier that somebody may have jammed the door with a key. So you could use a key on the other side to get in. So I'm going to try that. I'm not sure if it's correct. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Okay, you're wrong. There's a lot of spots here, a lot of different options. I'm pretty sure these are correct right here. I'm pretty sure he doesn't bash him with a bottle here. Oh wait, that's a different one. Oh, I, I think I screwed that up. I, I thought there was only two options. It switched to a third one, which is not correct. It's a puppet of life education. Uh, he works in the mobile classroom with the educator and to help encourage conversations with students about situations they might find themselves in or how to act in a positive way when they do. Well, that's really cool. It's more of a teacher's aid kind of thing for kind of social developmental stuff. I like that. Okay, let's try this. Oh, I was so close. The bottle close. was used as a weapon during a scuffle in the smoking lounge. I had it. Then, to ensure no one would interrupt, the murderer locked the door. The unconscious body of the victim was moved to the altar room. Once the body was on the altar, the murderer thrust the dagger into the victim's heart. Symbols were drawn with the blood. The wardrobe was used to hide the bloody robe from anyone's eyes. The killer washed himself and took a clean robe from the hangar before leaving. Are you all right? You're on the floor, not moving. <laughs> I think I know what happened here. That's funny. I'm starting to put the pieces together. Fabio was stabbed. I see nothing gets past you, Werner. Yes, he was stabbed, but only after being knocked out in the next room and placed here. I do not yet know why. So who's responsible? Well, it was one person working alone and the murderer has now donned a robe. He or she could be hiding in plain sight. We have lost time, Werner, but your discretion may prove to be a benediction after all. So they had a robe on before, I think, and then they took off their bloody one and switched to a clean one, right? Okay, so I think, are we already ready for the mine palace? We can start putting it together. We definitely don't have everything. Yeah, they swapped it out, yeah. I know everyone's wearing a robe. At least all the guys are. <laughs> so that makes it pretty tricky. Okay, so circumstances of Fabio's death and died on the altar. Those are related. Fabio was sacrificed on the altar during an occult ritual. Say Fabio was assaulted in the nearby room and circumstances of his death. That's related to. Ah, you can switch between the two. So either he was sacrificed or the ritual was staged. It was a cover for the true murder motive. I'm pretty sure that's correct. He was assaulted in a nearby room and the room was locked and unlocked. No? Okay.
Okay, this might be related, that the room was locked and unlocked, but the key remains untouched. There we go. So the murderer had a key to the altar room. The murderer was in the possession of a key to the altar room and locked the door. Okay, there we go. I think that's all we can do right now. Ah, we can start to ask him about stuff too. Oh, that's really neat, Jada. How long have you, uh, I guess, been using that uh, educational tr tool? Has it been around for a while? Or is it something pretty new? The murderer had to have access to this room. After the crime, he used his own key to lock the door. So, who had the key to the altar room? I'm not sure. As a special guest, I was provided one by Mr. Manchios. He should be able to tell you of any others. Where can I find him? Most likely in the main hall, entertaining his guests. He has a mask with golden stars. You can't miss him. But please be discreet. We don't want to risk disturbing the revelry. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's kind of surprising we haven't actually met this main guy, right? I know you can untangle this mess. Okay, so let's double check what we got here. Ah, now we're supposed to, uh, whoops. Find Manchios and start talking to him. Find out who else had a key to the altar room. Sherlock, don't forget to find the information I need before the guests leave. Okay, John, I'm trying. I'm trying. Netflix is making a Squid Game reality show, proving that they missed the own point of their show. <laughs> I'm not surprised, Phantasma. I mean... What's his name? Kind of already did it, right? Uh, Mr. Beast. He kind of did that YouTube video after Squid Game took off. But I'm not surprised. I'm excited to see what they do with season two, though. I really like the show. Arbo! How's it going, Arbo? Welcome, dude. What are you up to? Are you excited about all that new Resident Evil content? I know you're a big Resident Evil fan. Okay, so we're looking for somebody with a gold mask. Entertaining as guests. Oh, golden stars. Okay. That one kind of looks like it might have golden stars. Oh, I heard the finale will be splendid. Nope, that's not it. That's awesome, Arbo. I'm curious, what are you planning on playing first? I'm excited for the village DLC. Okay, hard to see some of these people's faces. Do you know anything about this? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. He had time for Netflix to kill all 455 civilians. <laughs> I'm curious how they're going to be eliminated, you know? He might not actually even be in this room. I know he's entertaining guests, but he could be around the corner somewhere else a little bit. Actually, I wonder if I should be using that function here. Does focus help? Oh, I bet it does. If we have the right thing connected, huh? This is to go this way. Oh, this is outside. He's probably not out here. 28 years they've been doing that, Jada? Wow, that's cool. I don't know if they do that in the States. At least I've never heard of it, but that's really cool. Impressive he's been going on that long, too. Yeah, I think I don't think he's outside. Welcome, sir. I do hope you enjoy yourself. So the only real clue we have is the mask with golden stars and he's nervous. Sometimes it doesn't tell you right away what they are. Could you help me? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Evades taxes. <laughs> you would think the easiest thing would just be to find the golden stars. You should have a unique one, right? That kind of looks like it has golden stars. Tense and brittle. 
Kurt Manchios, I presume. Ah. I'm Sherlock Holmes. There we go. Oh, you must be the one Werner told me about. What a sweet voice you have. It must belong to a handsome young man. Oh, dear God. Can I call you Sherlock? As you wish, Mr. Manchios. Mr. Vogel asked me to help you. The body in the altar room requires answers, and quickly, I suspect the murderer to still be here. What? Lower your voice. I don't want anyone I don't to understand. Hear us. Everybody seems... Uh, not everybody, but a lot of people know about this murder, and nobody is actually reporting to the police or anything. They had a very weak explanation as to why they're not getting the police involved. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. I hope they're returning the only ones alive. That's funny. Let's see. If you saw Harold the Giraffe bedroom, they keep saying it's a secret, but the little children think he is real, and we can't say he's fake. It's like Santa Claus, Jada. It's like Santa Claus. Got to keep the lie going, right? Did you know Fabio well? People are starting to look at us, Sherlock. Change the subject. I can't believe what happened to him. To me. Such an atrocity. Think what it means for me. A wonderful evening for so many good, influential, and rich people has been ruined. I have betrayed all my promises of exotic delights. I don't understand. Surely a murder would affect your reputation to a greater extent. Please, isn't this why you are here? I thought you were a silent magician. Do your tricks and make it go away. Wow. I know he's like, oh, I'm, woe is me. He's still holding a drink. He's still hanging out with people. I don't even see how it's affecting him at all. I need to find all those who had the key to the altar room. As far as I know, Mr. Vogel, Fabio, and you had access to it. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Also, Matista and Santos. Santos? Who is that? Santos Pinchetti, my major domo, in his opinion at least. What does that even mean? I'd like to speak to Mr. Pinchetti and Matista. Do you have somewhere I might have a private conversation with them? Of course, of course. Let me think. Matista is entertaining the guests somewhere. Perfect. And Santos, oh yes, he will be busy with the servants. Or the cook. What's that noise? What's going on? Police? Hopefully police? Because <laughs> we need Praise help. Praise filth. You're under arrest. Uh-oh. Don't put us with these guys. Oh, they're just shooting. What the heck? is going on here did they just shoot out flowers oh they're actually beating people up what is happening <laughs> that's one way to take down a party I love this music choice for this this is brilliant I know, right? Shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> Although when they were blasting those shotguns, it really looked like it was uh, like flower petals or something coming out. You know, I don't know the name of the song, Scout. I just really like classical music. And hopefully it doesn't get copyright strikes because this stuff is so old, I think you can use it wherever you want. Committed a crime. And now I have to free you, kiss your hand, and apologize for the inconvenience. Your grace. I did tell you that Mr. Vogel and I were innocent. I emphasized it in my statement. Your statement? Thanks to some bigwigs who work for the so-called good of the country by releasing fleas like you. Thank God we have Vogel in his letter. Once I get to that goldfish, I'll... Bigwig? Oh, my wretched brother Mycroft and his long nose. Wait, did you say Mycroft? Mycroft Holmes? Are you the youngest son of Violet Holmes, rest her soul? Hey, maybe we'll get some more information about our mom. <laughs> That's funny. The only unrealistic thing is they're all rich people. <laughs> true, true that. You knew my mother? Not personally, no. Not exactly. I was working on the paperwork for that case. Would you happen to remember anything of the events? Well, I didn't make the inquiry, but I remember seeing some notes. Why? 
Perhaps we can negotiate. I could be quite useful. Huh. Got you hooked, right? You know what? Stark and the others think they're the smartest here, thanks to you. Let me get this straight. Are you listening to me, lad? I'm all ears. Take this case. Report to me only, to Constable Harvey Oswald. I'll leave everything I have on this table. Find the murderer. Be a real copper. Question the suspects, make them sing, give me something substantial. And if Mr. Vogel is not a suspect? If he's innocent, then you can take your favourite degenerate away from here. <laughs> if you slip or mess with the evidence, then trust me, your brother won't save you from my bludgeon. Meanwhile, I'll be checking the archive for you. If anybody asks, then you're a consulting detective. Uh... Let's make a start then. Partner. Isn't that the name of one of those old uh We should have listened to the guests games? There. Now I have nothing to write about. Oh no, I didn't get enough information for John. That's okay. I did get a little bit, but I didn't focus on that one before that. I can't go back to prison. Okay, let's... Well, one thing I didn't like that that uh, opper told me is that we can only report directly to him. Like, are you trying to keep something from other people? Like, what's up, what's up with that? Okay, the provider of this ticket has permission to inspect all evidence on case number 62-60. Yes, that's right, Scout. So, John is kind of our imaginary friend that kind of travels with us everywhere. You'll just see him pop up wherever we go, and he chats with us, keeps us company, keeps us insane, and actually helps us out with cases, kind of. Kind of like our inner monologuing, sort of. And agree 99, yay, public domain. You know, you actually see um, classical music quite often in like racing games, I've noted, which is kind of cool because I like it. And at the same time, it doesn't cost them any money. You know, they can put whatever classical music they want in there. Uh, report number 62-60. Following a report from a witness of a sa the satanic ritual, who claimed to have found a body, the raid on the Manchios mansion was granted. It resulted in the arrest of multiple suspects and dispersal of the group in masks and robes caught in acts of gross indecency and unnatural behavior. I mean, it's pretty weird the way they're doing it, but I'd say it's pretty natural. <laughs> the body of the victim was found lying on an altar with a knife wound in his chest. The officer identified the victim, Fabio, 20, a local performer and artist. Arrested suspects. Vogel. B. Vogel has a letter of an ins insulting nature in his possession, which had been written by the victim. He claims to have found the body. He is infamous for his eccentric personality. S. Holmes. Carried a, a murder weapon, a dagger with the victim's blood, and other items of evidence. He was invited by another suspect, V. Vogel, presumably to obstruct the official investigation. Hold on. So we got caught with the murder weapon on our body and they're just letting us go because of our brother? That's pretty impressive. K. Manchios. K. Manchios, the owner of the mansion and organizer of the satanic party, paid the victim to participate in the ritual, had access to the crime scene. And Matista, Fabio's partner and participant in the ritual, tried to escape, resisted arrest, owned a book with the description of the ritual performed in the altar room. Some of the guests are temporarily detained for further questioning. Got quite a bit from that. Back on track to solve the case. Oh, we got the keys to the interrogation room. So can I go and actually talk to everybody? That's cool. Witness deposition. I, Santos Pinchetti, am witnessed who reports a suspicion of murder at Manchios's mansion in Grand Sarai. During preparations for the social party, I heard loud noises from the closed altar room. Immediately I thought of the sacrifice of a living being overviewed by none other than Kurt Manchios. There was blood on the walls, strange symbols, and a dagger in the heart. As soon as I was able to think clearly, I rushed to the police station to report my findings. The station responded to the deposition by sending a patrol, while the witness left the station and went home. So. So Santos is the one that says he first saw the murder. Um, and he saw, he thought of the sacrifice of a living being overviewed by none other than Kurt. 
Does that mean he saw Kurt Manchios in there? And then he fled and called the cops. Okay, that's everything there. Looks like we have some new Mind Palace things. I didn't understand this term major domo. Uh, Pinchetti is a major domo. As a major domo, Santos Pinchetti has ultimate access to every room in the mansion. Hmm. I don't know if we can pin that on anything yet. Oh, it's Butler. Thank you. I didn't know that connection. Okay, so Vogel's being held because of the letter he had. It's not connected to that. There we go. Uh, Pinchetti is a suspect. Pinchetti is a suspect who should be arrested and questioned. He had a key, which he did not mention in his disposition. That's interesting. We connect those two? I think we tried that before. I don't think any of these other clues actually connect, so I think we can keep on, keep on going. Oh, so like um, like an Alfred or something, Phantasma, and Batman. Where there, there are other butlers and maids and stuff, but he's kind of the head of the entire group. I can't go back to prison. Okay, so we should just be able to leave. Look, I found Verna. And talk to everybody. Maybe I should get out of my robe. Doesn't make me look super unsketch. There we go. I do like his main outfit. Nothing going on in here. What is all the blood on the wall? People that are chained up, they just hurt themselves and bleed everywhere, it looks like. What do I have pinned? I don't think I have anything pinned. Okay, let's mark Santos first. Or the cops beat him, that's a good point. Can I ask you a question? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. Oh, is that Santos? Good day, Mr. Manchios. No, Manchios. I am Constable Oswald's partner in this investigation. Be quick and gentle. Some of your colleagues are untrained bores. Although I don't mind meeting young officers. The new blood here. Why you gotta be creepy about it? If you cooperate it? in finding Fabio's murderer, there will be no need to meet with the boars again. That voice. Verna's friend? You're the policeman. What a disappointment. Only an undercover agent can scour a ditch full of deviants. I am a consulting detective. Although I'm capable of replacing the entire department through my consultations. Sharp-tongued, I like it. May I presume this tongue will get us out of this trouble? I would be so indebted and glad to repay you. Nothing's changed. I'm looking for the murderer. That's the only way to get us out of trouble. But it shouldn't take much time, correct? We're all busy, after all. I need to examine you first. He's so inconvenienced, this poor guy. <laughs> I love it when they keep saying Insulting Detective, because I think that was the name of the old Sega CD Sherlock Holmes game that I played when I was a kid. Let's size this guy up. He wears makeup. Not surprising. He has a rash from expo exposure to hair dye. So he's probably normally gray haired. Uh, soap under fingernails. Washed hands in a hurry. Hmm, like the guy that was trying to get blood off of his hands with that pitcher? That's looking pretty shady. Lavishly expensive shoes. Okay, how are we going to classify this guy? Kurt Manchios is an extremely rich, eccentric, and frivolous. He is the organizer of the parties for Codona's Elite and the owner of the Manchios Mansion. He spends his life in the company of similarly overly privileged people. 
However, Mr. Manchios wishes to hide his true age from his younger participants of his parties. He is concerned with aging to the point where he uses makeup and hair dye to look younger. I mean, that sounded true. Or he's a strickler for cleanliness. So the only difference between these two is in the bottom paragraph. However, his being sociable in this manner has made him cautious regarding his health. He uses chemicals and hair dye to clean and improve himself to the extent that it damages his skin. No, I think he's definitely trying to hide his age. Definitely into the younger people. See you are a out. little over the top with your use of makeup, Mr. Manchios. Is it so difficult for you to acknowledge your age? Well, Sherlock, that's easy for you to say to an old man when you look as though you are barely 15. But still, it shouldn't be an issue for someone of your status. For people of my age, it isn't an issue, no. But the younger ones can be so afraid of wrinkles and grey flecks. I have to adapt. Yep. Such a methodical man who cares for his body but misses the soap under his fingernails. Are you so impatient or perhaps even impulsive? I wouldn't call myself that. Silly little details. If I missed it, it wasn't important. Or rather, it was less important than who or what I was focused on. I think I'm going to ask the questions before we go to evidence. Mr. Vogel told me a little about your parties, but I would like to know more directly from you. I'm all yours, Sherlock. You have me arrested and locked here with you alone. Quit making it creepy, dude. Why did you invite Mr. Vogel as your special guest? He's a pretty fellow. He's capable of surprising the public. He has a talent for saying words that no one else would wish to either say or hear. I suppose I can't argue with that. He is a free addition to the eccentricity of the party, which is fine by me, as long as it enhances my party. I'd like to know who you usually invite to your parties. Free minds who are able to leave reality for an evening, who can taste forbidden fruit without prejudice. There is nothing that quite spices up life like these parties. Assuming one is old enough and has worked many years for the good of one's country. Oh, all true laborers, I see. Ah, so very uh, exclusive club, it seems. Even though we were able to just walk right in, it looked like. They didn't even check us. What was Fabio like? His personality, his habits? Anything you can tell me? He was the brightest star of my parties. Young, magnetic, and full of energy. I don't even want to mention his beauty. Otherwise, I'll be sobbing. Aww. Expensive champion, I imagine. His performances were flawless. He deserved his payment. Do you think he was murdered because of money? Possibly. What about the other guests? Were they used to opening their wallets as well? I wouldn't restrict my guests from anything. I'm sure Fabio received a few coins from others for his services. Not surprising. Okay, let's start asking him everything we can. That's not something I know much about. That's not something I know much about. I've no idea about that. Yeah, that's two different options. That's not something I know much about. That's not something I know much about. Still only two. I've no idea about that. You'd better ask someone else. Ah, there's a third option. Good. Do you have any idea who tipped off the police to raid your mansion, Mr. Manchios? Of course. It was you. I could even say you Sherlocked me in here. A good guess, but the wrong one. The fellow who did that was Mr. Pinchetti, your major domer. What? Santos? But how could he even know? If he's not the murderer himself, the ungrateful swine, he has dared to besmirch my reputation. Not a very eloquent choice of words. What should I call him then, since he's a snitch? Make him talk, Sherlock. I'm quite certain he knows more about the murder than he has told the police. I'm pretty impressed with all the references they've had from other Sherlock things. That's really cool. That's not something I know much about. That's not something I know much about. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. Oh, I bet she would. And a BBC series. Is that the one that has... I can't think of the actor's name, but he was in The Hobbit, the most recent Hobbit movies. That's not something I know much about. You'd better ask someone else. It was pure business. Oops, Fabio escorted me a few times. I was merely showing my gratitude. 
This pair cost a small fortune. You must be extremely grateful, then. Tell me more. You've thrust a knife in an exposed nerve, Sherlock. Yes, he was my protege, and my beacon also. With my experience, and his beauty, we could have achieved anything. I had faith in him. I would have made him. That's probably all the clues we get from him right now. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. That's a lot of talent. Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. I'm guessing that's Sherlock Holmes and Watson in that order. See, this is really interesting because this game all takes place before Watson was even a thing, right? Okay, we should pick a new thing for this. I actually don't have one specifically for talking to her, I don't think. Let's just have that one set up. Oh, nice. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. You are Matista, Fabio's friend. This body, yes, it's Matista. But it's a mere shell that will die someday. Just like Fabio. Well, let's be nice and say condolences. Please accept my condolences for your friend. Thank you. I'm just here to ask questions and find Fabio's murderer. It will not bring Fabio back. Let's observe. And let's size her up, too. Bombadil Cumbersome? <laughs> what name is that for? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that before, Alex. Bombadil Cumbersome? Oh, look at that tattoo. A primitive occult tattoo. So she inks herself. As her own tattoos? That would be really hard on your chest like that. She's nervous. Okay, understandably. Oh, look at those marks. Self-inflicted. On the back of her arm, too. That's like, you can't hide that at all. Old and barely visible. So she had shackle scars. So she was one of those ones that was... Maybe bleeding and tied up in that room. And the same branding. We saw that slave mark on somebody else, I think, or something similar. Blood-filled bruises obtained recently. He got beat up. Okay, here's the two options. Matista, the performer and Fabio's partner, had a difficult life. She was branded and enslaved while still a child. While enslaved, she met Fabio... Hence, their similar branding. Old scars are the result of her slavery during adolescence. She continues to be haunted by these traumatic experiences. She has a genuine interest in the mysticism, since her she has tattooed her body with occult symbols. Batista tries to get over her past, and the life of a performer seems to be an opportunity to earn money. Or, let's see how much of this is new and old. I think it's just the second paragraph. Or Matista seems to be pragmatic about her body after years of abuse. She sells herself to the guests who do whatever they want with her, not afraid to step over the line. Also, Matista marks her body with ink. Hmm. Oh, I see. Just because of how complicated the name is, Alex, that makes sense. <laughs> I know. I whenever I break out those like old jokes, I'm just like, oh, nobody remembers that. <laughs> I'm surprised I remember that. Hmm. A lot of self-inflicted wounds. I don't know. I feel like this one about punishes herself for her, the past seems a little weak. I feel like this one might be more relatable. I'm going to try this. You have both old and new scars. Some from the time when you were a slave with Fabio. Other scars have a different origin. The guests pay good money to torment you? I am skilled in giving pleasure but I don't participate in such practices. 
I thought your body was... For sale. It's true. Many unwanted things were done to my body. Oof. And the pain helped me to discover... Occult deities? Yes, the tattoo speaks loudly of it. Yes. Your gods abandoned me, and the ones I favor now are more protective of me. How did you escape? Something happened. One night the master fell down the stairs. I made him fall, and he died. We ran away that day. We managed to get on a ship and traveled here, to Gordona. Fabio and I started a new life here. It was very hard at first, but it became better with time. Until today. <laughs> you think? The bruises on your neck are not self-inflicted. Someone else made them. Some guests can't contain themselves. They even bite. Sometimes. That's messed up. Oh, I can't talk to her anymore? I know I can handle the news. Maybe we need to put something together in the mind palace. We actually have quite a few new options here. Okay. Okay, she had activity at the party. Could that be related to her bruises? Batista suffered bruises on her body from brutal interactions with the guests during the party, so she was hurt very recently, even tonight. Okay, uh, Kurt Manchios is clean and he has a washing routine. That makes sense. He carefully prepared himself for the depravity. <laughs> Kurt Manchios has feelings for Fabio. I'm not sure what I can connect that to. Always consensual, Alex. Yes, very good point. Always consensual. Hey, if everyone's down for it, have fun, you know? As long as you're being safe and not hurting anybody, unless they want it, I guess. Oh, we got this connection. The murderer cleaned themselves, and Bert Manchios is unscrupulously clean. Oh, we have two options for this. So he uh, carefully prepared himself for depravity, or he cleaned himself of blood after Fabio's murder. I can't say for sure which one. I'm going to go with the murder option, just as a guess, but I don't know if that's right. Santos called the police. None of that seems to match up with anything. Hmm. I think we might be done there for now. Okay, let's look at our missions. So we still have to talk to Santos. Let's try pinning that one now. Still have to do a little bit more for that other one too, but I'm not sure who that's for. It's like, is everybody under arrest also part of the same case? That would be kind of surprising. Werner, are you all right? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. In there fact, it's something of a family reunion. My brother spent quite some time in this place himself. You should not be here. I told the police everything I knew, but they refused to let you go. They require proof to free you. Ha! <laughs> what did you expect? The mighty Sherlock Holmes swans in, tells the officers what to think, and the world obeys? Of course not. Anyway... I struck a deal with the constable, and I've got a free hand in the investigation. I wish that's I how it worked. I find proof to solve the case for him. He obtains files about my mother's death for me. Well done. If one has the power or will and can act, then one must. I wonder, suppose you couldn't get the proof to your truth. Would you tell a lie to the guard that enabled my freedom, knowing my innocence? Would that not be just? We have to do the truth. Let's say we would not lie. 
There are lines I will not cross, Verna. I will do my best to secure your release, but with proof, not deception. Really? How many white lies have you told on this island? Why not for me? Why not another? That is absurd. I can resolve this without compromises. I don't know if we have said any lies. Do not lies. give up hope. Be honest. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it. Let me see what I can do about all this. Wait. Oh, I had the wrong thing selected. I wanted to provide evidence. Here we go. Let's question I'm not supposed it. to know anything about this. One response. I can't follow you here. Two. I can't follow you here. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I have learned who told the go. police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo of the manor. He cleans up after you. Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. Interesting. I know you can untangle this mess. Okay, that's all we had to ask him. There might be more on the other side past the first room we started in. I think it was that room. Unless, now that we've talked to him... I know I can handle the news. Nope. Because I knew we had more to ask her about. All kinds of people in here. Still dressed up. Don't look at them. They'll serve us if necessary. And they're still drinking booze in the police department. That takes some big balls. <laughs> Let's just ask him for trouble. Are you able to help me? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Oh, here's the chief guy. Okay, let's see what we can show him. You'd better ask me a question I know how to answer. I've nothing to say about this. You'd better ask me a question I know how to answer. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. There's three responses. I've nothing to say about this. Four? Have you considered oh, Mr. Santos Pinchetti as a suspect? The snitch? Have you seen him? I mean, my breath could knock him down. What's so special about him? As a major domo, he has keys that open all the rooms, including the one to the crime scene. Could have testified only to circumvent suspicion, don't you think? We need to question him. Right. I'll send our men to fetch him. Stay here. Hmm. They brought him in, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to interrogation room number seven. Mr. Pinchetti didn't even resist, our men said. Thank you. That's interesting. You can question Mr. Pinchetti in the interrogation room. Okay, we should have that one pinned, I believe. He said it was room seven, is that right? I actually don't see numbers on these. There's six, five, here's seven. Mr. Pinchetti, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness, sir. Everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. <laughs> I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. It's like, I, I can't do this. I gotta work. Can't arrest me when I'm working. Yeah, let's size this guy up. Inflamed skin, psoriasis, or allergy? Interesting. Repaired multiple times, so it looks like he had some scratches in his jacket. Dye textile, colored more than once. Hmm. And Christian, we are Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> We're the main character. Oh, here we go. You found a new favorite quote, Christian. I love it. I used to use that quote too. Oh, he stepped in blood. How interesting. Okay, how are we going to describe this guy? Uh, Santos Pinchetti is the head servant at the Manchios Mansion. 
Despite being employed at the highest position within the household, he appears to be poor. His body shows symptoms of psoriasis. Mr. Pacetti hides his damaged skin under layers of makeup. The major domo suit had multiple holes that had been patched or sewn. To renovate the suit's look, Mr. Pacetti had dyed it. Or is he this one? Despite having enough money, Mr. Pacetti sp spends as little of it as possible. Cheap makeup hides imperfections on his body. In an attempt to look even more modern, Mr. Pinchetti has dyed his suit on several occasions. To save even more money, the Major Domo appears to have personally repaired multiple holes in the suit. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think there's any Sherlock movie with talking animals, Christian, but there are a lot of different Sherlock movies and TV series and all kinds of stuff. I don't know which of these to pick. Hmm. Gosh, I just don't know. I'm trying to think of like, which of those clues specifically calls out one of these and not the others? So I guess the main thing which is common with all of them is that he looks poor. I don't know that we have a reason to believe he's not poor and just saving his money. Let's go ahead and just say he has financial difficulties. You are the major domo of a rich mansion and you seem barely able to afford decent clothing. You hide, under heavy makeup, a skin disease that might be treated with more onerous but less harmful means. Do you have money troubles? I do not have a lot of means. The pay is below what you might expect. But you could easily change your job if your employer does not meet your elementary needs. Yeah, one can change his employer, that is true. And the blood on your shoe, where does that come from? <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't He's actually like... know. Perhaps from a guest? That wasn't a good answer. <laughs> okay, did you know the victim? Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Ew. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always some um, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we might have some new Mind Palace stuff to put together. So there was blood on Pinchetti's shoe. We only have two different Pinchetti quotes, but they're not related. Ah, hmm. oh, there we go. It's like one of these has to connect, right? So now we have two options here. We can say that Fabio bruised Matista during their fight in the smoking lounge, Fabio bruised Matista, or Matista suffered bruises on her body from brutal interactions with the guests during the party. I don't really want to blame Matista yet, so I'm going to go with that one. But we can always change it. We can always change it. That's all we can do now. Please let me out. Oh, we can check his stuff. Okay, here's the key that he had. 
I recognize the key from the altar room among these. Oh, there we go. Looked like it was going to zoom in and then it didn't. Bert Manchios's will and note. A small note attached to the will says, Santos, my hopeful slug. You begged me to include you in my will, so I did. Here's my latest revision of the will. Kurt, the text of the will under the note. Santos Pinchetti, the major domo of the Manchios mansion, receives a jar of mas mustache wax and a salt lamp, and he might always remember his caring employer, Kurt Manch. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. That might be good reason for this guy to not like Manchios when he dies in his will. He's just going to give him mustache wax and a salt lamp? I don't even know what a salt lamp is. But that's pretty messed up. Ah, we can ask him. Good. Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major domo? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. Oh, the only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to dye and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. She died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are Oof. entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard. And he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties. He paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting Because he was young and beautiful. <laughs> At least that's the best I can tell. Okay, we got some new mine palace. What do we get? That Kurt Manchios gave Fabio expensive gifts. And that makes sense with this one, that he had feelings for Fabio. No? Okay. Seemed like they were pretty close. Hmm. How about that? He mocked Pinchetti, but Pinchetti was also his major domo. Here we go. Pinchetti had been forced to work for Kurt Manchios in the desperate hope of obtaining heritage, but it hasn't paid off. Ah, I can combine those two. Uh, Santos, Santos Pinchetti failed to notice the blood stain on the side of his shoe while cleaning himself after the murder. Potentially. Do this one? Yeah, we did. Okay. Might be it for now. Okay, let's pin the will. Do we need to talk to him about that now that we've pinned it? Please let me out. No. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. It looks like now that we have that pin, we're supposed to talk to somebody, right? Here we go. This is kind of neat. It's like we got all these people we need to keep questioning, and they're all in such close vicinity. It's very convenient. I've no idea about that. I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin with. Where did you get it? 
Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. Okay, so the three dots is a very specific person. Okay. I can't wrap my. Let me see if I still have it. Nope, we finished that. Okay. We have another one here. I head around such a tragedy at my party. Now, if it's that, I can't wrap my head around. Do you such have a to have it selected, or if you talk to the right person, is it just going to automatically use that clue? I'm assuming I have to have it selected. I know I can handle the news. There was at least one more person around here we could talk to. Nobody there. This area is restricted. Maybe it was Vogel at the end here? Oh, that's good to know. Nice. I like that you don't have to always have the clues selected because that makes it easy to miss something that I've been talking to this person, it's not working, but just because I had the wrong thing selected, that would suck. You've got a lot to do, Sherlock. No, not that one. That's in the evidence room. Let's see. This room where I was initially? I can't go back to prison. I guess it's not the evidence room. That was just our cell. I think the evidence room might be back this way. Archive. Specters. Maybe an archive? Continue our investigation while I look for the papers. Oh, there's an actual invest investigation room. Okay. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Mr. Moneybags, can I give you a piece of advice? You don't want to bother me. Let's see. Nobody else I can really talk to here. Where is the evidence room? Archive. That's where we came from. Further out this way? Did you hear Basilio Capello is in jail? Let's listen to them. Okay, I overhear the circumstances of the incident at Copello's company. Oh, just like a locker. I was thinking it was like an entire room just full of shelves of stuff. Not sure what this is looking for. Under my mattress? Eh? Oh, there's that one. Nope. Eh? Eh? Okay, armor, Copella. What the other one was. We're getting there. <laughs> Did you hear Basilio Capello is in jail? Oh, somebody's blocking it. Okay. There we go. My uh, death in the safe. Oh yeah, that was weird. I saw just for one message, Phantasma, your message, your uh, icons just disappeared. What is Twitch even doing in the back end? I don't get it. My curiosity has been piqued by talk that Basilio Coppella, the owner of the famous Armor Coppella Home Security Company, has been arrested. His situation is quite peculiar. A man named Niccolo Detti has been found dead inside a safe in Basilio's store. Basilio claims uh, innocence but the evidence is against him. He is being held in the holding cells at the police station. I didn't even talk to him yet. Let's pretend to be cops, eh? We can just stand around and look confused. That's a brand new case, so that's cool. It's like, wow, we're here. <laughs> okay, so it's like a locker, but somebody was just standing in front of it. It wouldn't be in a cell, right? Because the cells are all um, custom. Let's see here. Maybe I have the wrong thing selected. 
Because this is talking to somebody. I don't know who that is I need to talk to. But maybe I should have this one selected about the police investigation. This one's just really general, though. Maybe that has to do with the evidence room. Yeah, an evidence room isn't anywhere in these hallways. I'm thinking it's got to be further out this way. I might leave. Yeah, that's like the front door. Is there anything over this way? Oh, there's the evidence room. Good night. Your ticket, please, if you want me to help you. This is not a ticket. Don't you understand what a ticket is? <laughs> We're going to get a whole bunch of these. Don't waste my time. Don't you understand what a ticket is? Don't you understand what a ticket is? This is not a ticket. Don't waste my time. Don't you understand what a ticket is? Don't waste my time. Don't you understand what a ticket is? Any of these could be a ticket. This is not a ticket. Don't you understand what a ticket is? Don't waste my time. I'd like to check there the evidence is. from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then? Let me see. <laughs> oh, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second. I'll bring it to the table. I was kind of hoping he might have something to say for something else as well. But no, he literally only wanted that one piece of thing of uh, the clue. A lot of key rings. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials KM in the corner. Mm. Oh, would that have been... What was the name that we read earlier? Claws? It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. Aha. Letter from Fabio. This is the first time we've seen anything from him, I believe. The letter was... Uh, the letter that was found in Vogel's evidence box. Is your mind unsound? You can't control your bitterness. Not around me, anyway. For me, it's too great a risk to ignore that kind of behavior. I can be, speak, and play with anyone I choose. I'm not another Matista. You pay me, but you haven't bought me. Of course, I'll keep your generous donations, even though they hardly compensate for your last terrible outburst. I'm leaving you, although Matista will still be around. So this is in Vogel's evidence box, but might have been uh, aimed at somebody else. Might have been aimed at uh, Mantios. Okay, Mantios, thank you. Not the time for privacy. A needle? An emergency kit for boredom. <laughs> for boredom? <laughs> Gotta get high really fast. A key to the altar room. A handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. Ew. That's not for bedtime reading. Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. It's actually a really cool looking book. I like that side spine. The police found this occult book in Matista's bag during the arrest. According to the Ex Libres, the tomb was taken from Mr. Mancio's collection. It contains illustrations and descriptions of a ritual similar to the crime scene. Prepare the naked body of a recently deceased object of interest. Draw symbols of Mars and Venus to enhance the power you possess. To use the force of male and female nature. Pierce his heart with a golden dagger to be rid of the blood that does not help you. Or that does not love you. Draw a symbol representing your love while waiting for the resurrection. Recite the charm. Ooh, wait a second. This is that. Sounds like a like a spell to try to make someone fall in love with you, where it talks about place his heart with a golden pierce his heart with a golden dagger to be rid of the blood that does not love you. Yeah, somebody that doesn't love you. Kind of sounds like Manchios might be doing that against him. I don't know. The book describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. I love how much uh, suspicion they can give you for every single person. I think I've... Oh, no, there's one more thing to look at. What did I miss? Was it something I picked up? Didn't look at it closely. Oh, this wallet or notebook? 
Werner's personal sketchbook. Sketchbook. Thank you, officer. Okay, we definitely have some mind palace stuff to get through. Oh, it's just one new one. The power of love. Batista's book describes a supposed love ritual of stabbing someone and drawing symbols of Mars and Venus in blood. Hmm. None of those really line up with any of these, I don't think. I'll leave it for now. Maybe one of those connects. Oh, we're going to get some lunch in 10 minutes or so, but you will be eating out today. So you might join with your phone. What are you going to go out to eat, uh, Alex? That sounds fun. I only usually try to go out for work or for lunch when I'm at work, like once a week. Usually we do it on Tuesdays, actually, just because as much as I like to go out every day, it's just so expensive. You know, I prefer to take lunch and breakfast, actually, most of the time, but usually once a week we go out with everybody and get a group together and get some food. It's a nice treat, but if you go out all the time, it's that's how a lot of people actually burn way too much money is food. Food can be so expensive. Definitely cheaper to eat at home. Okay, let's check our mission. We have a new talking point here for the power of love. So we should go talk to um, Matissa. She's right here. There we go. This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped. I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. <laughs> I don't know what to say. This is the letter the police found in Mr. Vogel's pocket. Fabio wrote it. Do you know anything about it? I don't. Although I can feel Fabio's energy. It's there, but it refuses to let me analyze it. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. So all the time. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me, but I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. It's not cool to try to like convince, or not convince, but like force someone to be in love with you through spells. <laughs> it's supposed to be natural. That's not real love. Yeah, Scout, I'm getting weird vibes from this lady. At first, I didn't have too much of a problem with her. She seemed more of a victim than anything, but now I don't know so much. And Alex, you don't know? Maybe a local cafe or maybe some subway? There's nothing around there, really. And yeah, at my work, I don't have too many food options either, unfortunately. Let's see, you have soup at home, which you couldn't bring. Gotta stop wasting money like that. It's tricky, right? Yeah, I know I always have to plan grocery shopping around breakfasts and lunches. Something easy I can... Usually, honestly, after I stream every day, I usually quickly go and make my breakfast and lunch the next day. So it's just ready for me to wake up ready and grab my food and go. I don't have to do anything else. I don't draw out the blood that doesn't love you. <laughs> How do you know which you're drawing out? It looks all the same to me. I know I can handle the news. Okay, so we got some new stuff in the mine palace. What did we get? Uh, that Matista trusted in the occult over Fabio. Hmm, I guess I'd be connected to that book. Yeah. Batista may have performed a ritual on Fabio to bring his love back. Okay, I think these are connected, actually. Oh, good, good, Alex, yeah. Now, for dinner, Andy usually handles the cooking for dinner. Um, and often she'll be doing that... You know, either before I've even gotten home, I get home later than she does, or while I'm working out or something. 
but we usually go out for dinner once or twice a week. We try to limit it, but uh, sometimes it just is inconvenient, you know? You have a lot going on, you just don't have time to, like, make a full dinner or something. She also really likes to cook, and she goes way above and beyond. It's always great. Yep, that was right. Okay, according to Santos Pinchetti, and by the content of the letter, it may have been addressed to Kurt Manchios. Let's see. So this might be interesting. Sa Santos informed the police, but he also had blood on his shoe. Ah, that is a connection. Okay, so it's, it's one or the other, though. One or the other. Santos Pinchetti failed to notice a blood stain on the side of his shoe while cleaning himself after the murder, or Santos Pinchetti may have stepped in blood while discovering the crime scene. I mean, right now, all my clues, I'm kind of thinking it's more of that main guy that, like, runs the thing, so I'm going to choose this one for now, but I'm probably going to change that. I only have two more clues and they're not connected. Okay, so we have the letter from Fabio. And looks like they're to the main owner guy. Let's go, let's try talking to him about that. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. <laughs> it may be elementary, but man... Apparently, I'm way below elementary skills. How's it going, Bambi? Good to see you. Welcome. You'd better ask someone else. Have you uh, played this game or any of these Sherlock games, Bambi? Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. Ah, oh, all right. He's not too unconvincing. Not sure. Let's see, he might just be a creep. Maybe that's all he's guilty of. Let's see. Oh, congratulations, Bambi. That's awesome. Your last day of student teaching. Way to go. Oh, you must feel so relaxed. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. Okay, where are we on the cases? We still have the letter. So we're going to ask everybody else if maybe it was actually meant for them. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. Or was it this one? I have reason to go. believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touche. <laughs> Man, this guy is not being helpful at all. It has way too much pointing at him, right? Oh, you're more stressed because you're getting on a plane on Thursday. So my assumption is you do not like flying, man. Uh, I love to fly, actually. It doesn't bug me at all. But Andy hates flying. Okay, let's check our mind palace out. What else do we have? Either Vogel or Manchios' line. Connect to that one. There we go. Oh. Oh, you get bad headaches when you fly. I wonder if it's the altitude change or something. That's no fun. I always just liked it because it's like, hey, 
I can't do anything but goof off and play on my Switch. Or now, I guess I'd be playing with my Steam Deck. But it's like, I just get to relax, play some games, go someplace new. That's always exciting. So what do we think? Ver Vogel took the letter under influence. So Verna Vogel took the letter himself while under the effect of various substances. Or Kurt Mancio slipped the letter into Verna Vogel's pocket to make him look like a suspect. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I was thinking it was Manchios, and then I wasn't. I'm gonna. I wanna say he might have taken the letter. Don't know that makes him guilty. There's still somebody else that I think we need to talk to. Yeah, it's still highlighted. What else have we missed? Oh, this guy. Please let me out. Can't talk to him about that. It sounds like you're all good to go, but if you have a bad headache, Bambi, you can't enjoy any of that. That actually happened on my last, no, my last flight, but when I went to Japan. On the way there, it was on and off. A Andy was kind of having some panic attacks during the long flight over the ocean she didn't like that but on the way back it was really bad I didn't get to play anything it's mostly taking care of her you know is there somebody else to talk to maybe that was it I don't remember no that was it do I need to talk to her again Could Fabio have written this letter uh -huh. to Kurt Manchios? Oh, that could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. Hmm. It doesn't sound too aggressive, but the fact that he was leaving could have pushed him over the edge. I'm not sure. And Scout, your solution for flying in Civ 6 saved you so many times. I bet. That's a big game. Those take a long time. It would take the entire flight just to try and finish one match. I see your dad forgot to sign up for the TSA pre-check, so we have to go through all the security. Like some kind of peasant family trying to get... <laughs> it's not that bad, Bambi. But it depends on where you're flying from. Are you leaving from a really large airport? Because sometimes it can take like an hour to get through security. But nine times out of ten, like at least in the smaller airports, it's usually really quick. San Diego? Okay, that's that could be a pretty bad one. I've done the LAX, and yeah, you have to get there at least two hours early. Preferably even more. But I've also flown at a lot of smaller airports, and even without the TSA pre-check, you just walk right up. It's really fast. Oh, Scout, I was just saying that Civ 6. I've never played a Civilization game, but I know what they're all about, and I know those matches can take a very long time. So that would definitely eat up like an entire flight for you. Okay, let's check our mind palace again. I only have these two options. Hey, there we go. So Fabio shattered Kurt Mancios' feelings. We still don't have enough to put everything together, although it still says go to the mind palace. Oh, are these red because they are contradictory? Aha, now we actually have... Oh, I see, because we have to keep changing them until they're all lined up. So here's an option. We don't have all the clues yet, so there's going to be more, but it says... Uh, for years, Fabio played with Kurt Manchios' heart and abused his interest in the young performer. When Manchios received yet another rejection, he murdered Fabio and staged a love ritual to avoid suspicion. And uh, 
If we do believe he did it, we have two other options. We could say it was a crime of passion. Kurt Mancios was heartbroken and panicked and did not mean to kill Fabio. The improvised ritual was a desperate attempt to cover up the crime. A pr prison sentence should be enough, or his harsher punishment is the death of his love, or he's a sexual predator. Kurt Mancios killed Fabio in cold blood. He staged the crime as a ritual to blame Matista. He planted the letter in Vogel's pocket to avoid suspicion. Mancios has no consideration for the life of others, and he deserves to be hanged. Whoa! Oh my gosh, Scout, that's really long. So it could take over 12 hours to finish a single match? Ah, uh, see, if I change that one, it breaks everything. Okay. But we're still not done with this letter. We still have more people to ask about it. So Matista agrees it may not have been addressed to Manchios. Fabio wanted to break off all connections with Manchios, but was unable to do for, for financial reasons. Okay. So yeah, that makes me think less and less that Manchios actually maybe have done it. Let's um, go talk to some other folks. That's the thing, Alex. Is like you just got to feel bad about yourself. It never actually tells you you were correct or you were incorrect. And it kind of gives you... A lot of uh, fun discussions, especially on stream, we were talking about earlier, like, oh, I think you should have done this because I believe this and this. And you can kind of argue different cases. It's kind of neat. Now, I guess you might say it's very unsatisfying to a point because you don't know exactly if, if you've been playing the game right or wrong, but that's kind of part of the fun, though, too, I guess. Oh, I can accuse him. No, let's not do that. I appreciate your... Cooperation, Mr. Manchios. Wait just a moment, I have something to check. Yeah, we've solved like four cases, and uh, I don't know if I actually did any of them correctly. Do they have like a strategy guide or something that tells you if some are actually correct or not correct, Phantasma? Please let me out. The air here is rather refreshing. Okay, so... I'd even yeah. recommend that some of my friends... They don't tell the you place. all that. It's pretty neat, actually. I think... Do I need to maybe talk to the police officer? Where was he? There we go. Let's show him the letter. This letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Manchios. It's time to free Mr. Vogel. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Manchios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Manchios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. <laughs> so we can't free our friend that easily. And uh, Bambi, you were saying you just put your time at Portia and the Outer Worlds onto your Switch for the flight. Plus, you just got a controller for the Switch, which is good. You don't like the Switch light controller buttons. Oh, nice. So uh, how does that work? Do you prop up your Switch light somewhere when you're on travel and then use a separate controller to play it? Or is does the controller connect, like hold the Switch light physically or something? I'm not sure how that would work. Because it's built in, you can't really take it off. And uh, Holly, how's it going, Holly? Welcome. The rest of the Frogware games do tell you if you're right or wrong, right? Changing it up, I suppose. And we might be the greatest detective or an idiot. Sherlock is so confident in himself either way. That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters, as long as we feel like we're right. Continue our investigation while I look for the papers. Okay, did it add something to the Mind Palace? No, nothing new yet. I, I still feel like we need to talk. No! Okay, it looks like the letter's done. There might be, still be something to do here, though. Christian! What's in the box? How's it going, Christian? What were you streaming today, dude? Where are the doggies? 
There is no dog with me right now. I think they are all hanging out with mom right now. She's watching some show on, I think it's on Hulu. I forget. It's called Outlanders. Have you guys heard of it? I haven't watched it before. Oh, nice. Have a good lunch, Alex. Maybe we'll see you from your phone. I think there's only an alert, Bambi, if... Um... Oh, I see what you meant, Christian. Where are the doggies for the alert? They only pop up, I think, when there's a raid with, like, more than one person. Um, it's to kind of cut down on, like, spam and stuff, because some people will purposely try to, like, uh, you know, cause disruption on streams by, like, just attacking a streamer with a bunch of, like, you know, sort of like a fake raid or something. Not that you did a fake raid, but some people could do that, of course. So it's it's kind of a built-in thing. <laughs> the disrespect! <laughs> Not to you, Christian. You're regular. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so if I have this one connected... I don't know what else I need to look at with that connected, though. He said he left everything in the archive. Was there more for me to look at in here that I missed? Ah, okay. I can use this, too. What might I need to do that? Yeah, there you go, Bambi. There's the doggies. May I ask for your assistance? I usually have an answer for everything, but not for this. I like that answer. Um, and there's probably stuff I haven't connected, but I feel like if it has that symbol with the, like the little compass icon, that means I need to go somewhere and find something, right? That I'm missing. And the clue talks about him being in the archive, which makes me think, oh, am I supposed to find something with here? I'm not sure. But yeah, we can try in the mine palace, just kind of switching things around to try to blame somebody, blame somebody else. Oh, it's just a quest marker. Okay. I see you've been binging uh, Valhalla. Nice. And you're loving it. Uh, there's flying. What? Oh, flighting. Is that what you say that? Nordic rap battles and you pick up and snuggle the doggies. And, oh, that's pretty cute. Nice. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game. I think since number four. Okay, so instead of saying the ritual was a cover, well, I mean, that could still be true. Mmm, here we can say, during their fight in the smoking lounge, Fabio bruised Matista. That's if I want to blame Matista. Well, I mean, maybe that's the other one we need to look at possible options for. So if it is Matista, and we have to change a few of these around. Okay, so the other possibility is to, that Matista is the murderer, in which case she was afraid of Fabio's growing popularity and ambitions. She wanted to keep him for her as long as possible. In a last ditch effort, Matista conducted a live love ritual during which she killed Fabio. That doesn't sound correct at all, though. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's just in case you want to get back to this quest. That's good to know. Yeah, what I've been binging off stream, Bambi, is that Elden Ring, and I finally beat it yesterday. It was really cool. I'll go back to it to do some extra stuff, but I, I at least rolled the credits, beat the final boss. Um, so we can say uh, she's a crushed soul. Matista is the product of a tormented life. She knows no difference between good and evil. She wanted her love, Fabio, to stay with her always. Matista deserves help. She needs to be treated and have a chance to get over her past in an asylum. Or she's an occult murderer. Matista uses occultism as a way to avenge her miserable life. She stabbed Fabio to keep him close to her. She should be held accountable for her deeds. Any judge would have given her a death sentence without hesitation. Are those the only two options? <laughs> Do we have one that it's actually like our buddy Vogel? Or that it could be Pinchetti, maybe. Ah, yeah, there is another option. Okay, so the other option is this. 
Santos Pinchetti is the murderer. Pinchetti has worked for his uncle for years in the deep hope of obtaining his heritage. Manchios' hostility and humiliations have pushed Pinchetti to kill Fabio and frame his uncle. Manchios' imprisonment would make Pinchetti the only lawful heir. So, the two options with this case is correct the injustice. The only way for Santos Pinchetti to right his wrongs was to be rid of the monstrous uncle. Pinchetti should be punished for the crime of murder, but he has suffered enough and deserves a fresh start after a prison sentence. Or, it was cold revenge. Santos Pinchetti snapped after years of disrespect. Pinchetti devised a plan to be rid of his uncle. However, misery and despair cannot justify murder. Pinchetti is dangerous, and a noose around his neck is all he deserves. Whoa! And Bambi, you spent 20 minutes today learning how to teach yourself how to sleep with the main character's sister-in-law? <laughs> nice. Nice, Bambi. <laughs> Okay, so here's where, what, where my state of mind is, and tell me what you guys think. Um, with uh, the main guy, I'm always already forgetting their names. Um, Manchios, so Manchios the owner. With Manchios, I kind of feel like he didn't do it because, you know, he is kind of obsessed with this guy and trying to think of the actual clues that made me think that but he oh and the letter wasn't addressed to him kind of thing which can we read that letter again that makes sense and that um he wouldn't have written that letter to him because uh if he did he'd be losing his money train you know Let's see if we can look at the letter. Okay, here's what the letter says. Is your mind unsound? You can't control your bitterness, not around me anyway. For me, it's too great a risk to ignore that kind of behavior. I can be, speak and play with anyone I choose. I'm not another Matista. You pay me, but you haven't bought me. Of course, I'll keep your generous donations, even though they hardly compensate for your last terrible outburst. I'm leaving you, although Matista will still be around. Abio. Hmm. So Vogel thinks it's possible it was addressed to Manchios. He is unable to explain how it came to be in his pocket. Matist agrees that it may have been addressed to Manchios. Fabio wanted to break off all connections with Mr. Manchios, but was able to financially. Hmm. That I'm not sure. So anyway, back to the Mind Palace. I'm not totally set on its Manchios. Maybe a little bit of sus on Manchios. I don't believe that it was Matist. Matista. I mean, she seems to be doing some weird occult stuff, but I think she's just doing it to cope with her life, and I don't think she has anything against this guy, or that she would do it out of love, you know? So I know she was trying to do some love stuff with it, but not to kill him. I don't think she would do that. Santos kind of makes more sense to me, honestly. I think he has the best motive for murder, especially being him being the only lawful heir, you know? Hmm. But it says he's framing him. Would that mean that the letter was a fake, maybe? trying to think of what else has he done to like frame Manchios. Can I talk to him again? This is a tricky one. Oh, he did call the police. I forgot about that important fact. That's right, because they were trying to blame us for calling the police. And Man, I can't get any more clues. Thank you for your... All I can do is read the stuff in here. Let's read his profile again. Santos's profile. He's the head servant at the mansion. Despite being employed at the highest position within the household, he appears to be poor. His body shows symptoms of psoriasis. Um, Mr. Pinchetti hides his damaged skin under layers of makeup. The Major Domo's suit has multiple holes that have been patched to so or sewn. 
I don't know. I feel like this guy's been mistreated almost more than anybody. The other, the other two people there are, are there for work, you know? They're getting paid. They don't have to be there. And uh, I feel like this guy's there just to try to get this inheritance. And after being um, basically mistreated so badly, he's now trying to speed up the process, so to speak. And you don't think anyone else could pay Fabio? So I guess the letter would be... Well, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Some of it doesn't check out, but it says in the letter... Um, you pay me, but you haven't bought me. Um, I mean, that could still be from... Uh, the the butler because it totally makes sense that the butler would actually be the one making the payments you know the you know the, the guy with the money he's not doing anything you know he's just enjoying life the, the butler especially the main guy might handle paying everybody you know so i don't know it could still be him now santos can't pay him from his own pocket but he can absolutely pay him with uh you know his uh his i guess um I was going to say proprietor's money. <laughs> he doesn't give him money, but he can give him money to dole out to other people. And of course, if that money is not properly doled out, then he gets fired or busted or whatever. But yeah, I, I could still see him doing the actual pain. Bambi, you have? <laughs> you mean what? <laughs> you have done? <laughs> you have murdered people for less? I don't know. Something just... And this is really tricky. Like Alex was saying earlier, how do you know if you got the right one? So, something something deep down just makes me feel like it's Santos. <laughs> I could neither confirm nor deny. You should just deny. There's no reason to say that. It gets you in more trouble. <laughs> yeah, you just got to pick what calls to you. And you, maybe you don't answer Phantasma because you know. But for anybody else that hasn't seen this game before, or I guess you could say also Phantasma... What did you choose? Because you don't know if you picked the right answer. I think I'm going to go with Santos. There's something in my gut tells me it's Santos. Which is where we're at right now. But then I still have to pick which one. <laughs> no one's guilty. It's a trick question, right, Bambi? Oh, did you choose all three options? I guess because you can reload and do that, right? Hmm. Now, his uncle was being a jerk to him. It also seems that he was just in there for the money. So I also don't necessarily fault the uncle too much. Like, he's just like, yeah, you're just being a money-grubbing little rat. So, like, what are you doing here? Don't have to be really rude to him, but, I mean, at the same time, like, you got to watch your money around this guy. I think I'm going to go with it was cold revenge. Murder is never cool. Murder is never cool. Oh, that's right. You were going to deck that guy so I could see the video of that. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. It was cold revenge. And then I still have to go tell him as well. That was, that was I think, the toughest one for me to make a decision. You're going to slap your face. Don't, no self-harm, Jada. Don't hurt yourself. All right, let's accuse him. I know who killed Fabio. So I'm free to go, sir? Quite the opposite. I think it was you, Mr. Pinchetti. That is not possible. Allow me to explain. Oh, I'm curious to see how he responds to all this. Although, that's part of it, too, is none of them really ever confess very easily. They all just kind of say, like, no, not possible. And after this, make sure to save. It'll be your last. Ah, once you start that last mission, there's no more saving. That's okay, Jada. If you, if you want to hurt yourself, do it in a productive way. Do as many push-ups as you can or squats or something until your body just fails you. You'll, you'll get a good rush of endorphins. You'll feel better. And you'll be in a little bit of pain. But it's a good kind of pain, not a just damaging pain. You staged this decadent ritual so you would not be suspected. After a short fight, you knocked Fabio unconscious. 
you locked the door and dragged the body to the altar. You wanted to set up someone acquainted with this masquerade. I don't have the nerve to kill or stage a murder. I can't even leave my uncle's house. You wanted to be rid of your dear uncle. I myself barely know him and already find him intolerable. You've worked for him for years. Santos, do this. Santos, do that. He doesn't pay you. He doesn't recognize your work. He doesn't see you as family. But you thought that heritage might be yours. Instead, all you'll ever receive is mustache wax. Hmm? It is painful to witness such a situation. I cannot imagine how it must be for you. So you decided to frame your uncle. Put the blame for Fabio's murder on him. That way, the heritage is yours, and you are free of him. Half of what you say is true. I'm in pain. I have had a hard time with my uncle, but I'm not a murderer. I can't even stand up to my uncle. How could I have killed Fabio? He did nothing to me. He was a source of your troubles too, though. Especially since Mr. Manchios treated him like a king. Man, based on his responses, I'm feeling a little bit bad about this one. The blood on your shoe tells me that you were with Fabio. You stabbed him with the dagger while he was still alive. You drew a sigil on him. There was a great deal of blood. You needed to remove it. Blood is almost like glue. It sticks to everything, dries quickly, and is quite visible. But you know how to handle stains. You are Kurt Manchios's major domo. However, despite your best efforts, you missed a spot. It doesn't make sense, sir. I was never there. I am convinced there's a reasonable explanation. Oh, you can say I can try to help you or you deserve the gallows. I'm starting to feel bad about this choice now. He did have that blood stain on his foot. What does this option do? Your uncle is a cruel man. He used everyone around him to his advantage. I don't believe he even truly loved Fabio. You knew very little love, support, or care from him. You lost your mind, Santos. And innocent people were hurt. I can't allow you to go free, but I can try to help you. I can provide my findings to the police. Decadence and perversity might poison anyone around them. I... I don't know what to say. I can't breathe. I need to go outside. Unfortunately, you can't. Oh, dang. I'll remember this horror forever. I don't know if I made the right choice on that one. <laughs> you want them to, like, you know, come back at you like, Oh, how did you find out? They don't do that. They're always going to deny it. Okay, so I think we got to go talk to the constable. Constable, Santos Pinchetti killed Fabio. The evidence is clear. Is that so? Huh. A man like him has actually grown a pair. He intended to set up his uncle for the inheritance. The old man had humiliated him for years in every possible way. Oh, what a bunch of degenerates. Well, as for Mr. Pinchetti, the evidence tells us that he was wronged and pushed to commit a crime to be rid of his uncle. I suggest that you help in easing his sentence. That's a sad story, all right. But at least it's good enough for my promotion. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered. The discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones. Including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Uh -huh. Everything I've found is on the desk here. Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. Nice. Okay, now we got to save real quick. Just in case. We haven't saved this entire stream. <laughs> so yeah, what order is this? Yeah, that's the newest. There we go. Let's, I have to select the correct one. Here we go. There's the findings. This is it. And welcome back, Alex. How's it going, dude? You found a cheap bakery place to eat? What are you going to get there? Um, which choice gives you the achievement? It might be what they consider the right option. I'm not sure. 
Report 0743. Officers arrived to find the deceased, identified as Mrs. Violet Holmes, lying in the garden of Stonewood Manor. Visual inspection showed the victim to be thoroughly soaked, with a deep vertical incision two inches in length down her throat. Her face was swollen and covered in red blotches, likely the cause of death, hypoxia, awaiting confirmation from medical examiner. Main suspect, Otto Richter, he was arrested on the scene. The body was sent for autopsy. He had a throat slit? And she was thoroughly soaked, like soaked in blood? I'm not sure. Oh, that might have been correct. That was I had a little bit of suspicion on Montios, but I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. Sounds good to me, Alex. <laughs> Here comes back some more creepy memories. I really like that skeletal mermaid thing, though. The garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Sherry, it looks like you've almost found what you wanted. Oh, that's so cool. Hey, we're almost there. Nice, Phantasma. Thank you for the heads up, because that would have been a terrible Oh, you did it, Sherlock. Point. The case is closed, and all rewards belong to the winner. Bravo. It is merely the triumph of the truth. Is it? No compromises? No lies? You're happy with your decisions? Eh. It is what it is. <laughs> Whatever the truth, it had to be revealed. The victim deserved it. Well, you seem confident in the value of your actions. I guess since I'm free, you were heard after all. By the way, did you get that precious information about your mother? Oh, not that you must. Yes, I did. <laughs> Forgive my intrusion in such a personal matter. I simply worry I'm failing to be of much help to you. Actually, you were. For some reason, all the archives on the case had disappeared. This was a rare opportunity to obtain the impossible. Outrageous. Perhaps someone found the truth unpleasant. Society usually rejects those who speak with too much honesty, doesn't it? A comfortable lie is often preferred to an uncomfortable truth. Still, I believe that the latter should prevail, and I cannot remain silent. That's quixotism at its best. Your mere truth cannot defeat institutions, systems, and power. Etiquette, religion, marriage, they're all lies told to preserve connections, love, and sanity, and it's all corruptible. Lies destroy human dignity. How could you make a free decision without any knowledge of the truth? Are we really free to decide anything in this world, Sherlock? Eh, I'll say we're free. Oh, yes. It's a struggle, but yes, we can make our own decisions. That's what I fight for. And what an endless fight it is. Will you ever give yourself a break, Sherlock? No. You're a walking contradiction, Sherlock. You refuse to lie to others, but constantly lie to yourself. How long until the train comes off the track? I cannot look away, but perhaps I should take a few steps back. You're an accident waiting to happen, dear. Until then, I shall bid you adieu. This is a really interesting guy. <laughs> You've named him Franklin. I like that. Oh, the turtle that you rescued a while ago? He's back and he's made a burrow in your backyard. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, your turtle that you rescued took off but found its way back? That's really interesting. And that's very true, Alex. It's like that old saying, fake it till you make it, right? Okay, where's like the exit to this place? kind of like the main office. That's the evidence room. This way? There's the archive, inspectors. Oh, you know what? I think we were blocked from leaving this This area place. is restricted. No, that's not the area I need to go to. The hell is the exit? Oh, down here. There we go. How did I totally miss this? So how far in the woods did you take them? Like, are we talking like 100 feet from your house? Quarter mile? <laughs> That's pretty impressive he came back. I think it's meant to be. 
So we want to go back there. Wow, that's like, you know, an incredible trek for a turtle. That's impressive. It's just meant to be, Phantasma. You have a new pet that's going to outlive you now. I gotta select the right Facebook. There we go. Now there was something in the back of the house he was saying, I believe. I think I'm looking for that exact window. It looks like that, but it's a door. Oh, this one. Sherry, Sherry, please listen to me. Sherry. John, I always listen to you. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go through. Oh, no. I don't know what is beyond this door, but I can feel it. Buzzing, angry, like a fly at the window. I know. I can sense it, too. You locked away this memory for a reason. There is only pain here. Pain? And truth? You do not need to suffer, either. There is so much more we can do on Cordona. So many others we can help. There is no coming back from this. John, my anima, my brother, there is nothing more important in this moment than this truth. I know you fear for me, but my path was set long ago. I can no more step off it than I can ask the avalanche to roll back uphill. Just please be careful, Sherry. I love you. Quite. Come on. We'll go together. Oh, I like them. That's cool. I like their relationship. Even if he's imaginary. I, I'm guessing because this is like a point of no return, some side challenges are failed doing that. Why didn't I remember we had such a big garden? Maybe you forgot it for your own good. That's the descendant of a tree your father planted in London, correct? Indeed, we planted the sprout here, and for a while it grew happily. Alas, it seems without us here to care for it, it didn't survive. Oh, poor tree. Sorry, you're already going back, Alex. Those lunch breaks are so short, aren't they? Okay, I need to select this one. A little sound box. A little gazebo. Oh, I see him over there. Oh, look at that pond. Is that the raft we made together, John? Looks more like a pile of rotten planks now. Because that's what it is now. <laughs> uh oh. The hell was that? It's creepy. Tea set. Focus on anything here, it doesn't look like. Back. Is that it? There's a light on over there. Oh, there's a few lights on. Oh, did I miss the circle? I could have sworn I rotated it like 10 times and didn't find anything. I will stroll my way back to that cup because you cannot run in this area. Oh, oh, right there on the side. That's from Mother's favorite tea set. What is it doing in here? I think the white blended with the white. Just totally missed it. Oh, we're in first person now. Oh, this is crazy. There's like some memories when we were a child. What was that, Come John? Here, Sherry. Hurry.
Oh, that's um, the doctor and our mom, huh? Can't get through that. These must help calm her down. Oh no. Oh no. What are you thinking about? Is everything all right? I don't think so. I'm nervous that we did something with that medicine. Trying to help our mom. Oh. There she is again. Don't go, Mother. Wait. Remember this artifact from Mother's collection. Mother's work journal. I liked poring over the detailed pages and reading about my parents' collection. I did have a lot of cool stuff. Oh, this is cool. This is recreating some of those scenes that we kind of uh, recreated in the past, but now we're like living through it in first person. Oh, there's a symbol. Here it is. We'll just borrow it for a while. Did you hear that? Someone's coming. Let's take a peek. You call this progress? Short. 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 I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. Any result is progress, even if it is a worsening of her condition. It informs my... No, no. I have made my decision. She must be sent to a legitimate medical facility. I will not let her hurt Sherlock. What? Master Holmes, you do not understand. That will be all. I expect you to have left the house by week's end. Did I mishear him? I thought he said that. Sherry, say something. Can you hear me? You're scaring me. I thought he said, like, I will not let him hurt Sherlock. And here I thought the doctor was hurting our mom. I'm waiting for you. Were we the one getting treatment? Sherlock, I'm here. Come closer. Her hurt Sherlock. Okay, okay. Sherry, come here, darling. Coming, mother. This was for my mother, wasn't it? I remember how we came to the garden for a breath of fresh air. Oh, wow, I get to see us pushing around. Follow the color. Take me to my flowers, Sherry. They must already be in bloom. As you wish, Mum. I bet you missed the fresh air, didn't you? Terribly. The sun is far brighter than I remember. But I like it. We can walk each day from now on, if you want. That would be wonderful. It's pretty cool how, um, you never actually get to see her face. Just look at them. The stars of the earth. Even the sky must be jealous of their beauty. Indeed. Mother, would you like to go around the water? That would be perfect. I always wanted such a nice pond in London. It looks so peaceful. Mycroft knew you would like it. Mycroft was like significantly older than we us. We should huh? put some fish in it. Don't you think? How about some carp? That's a nice idea. Let's yeah, visit your father's tree. Right. It grows so fast, just like you. We could even build a tree house in it. <laughs> yes, Sherry. The 
music. Speaking of your father, could you call him out, please? Oh, no. Mom! He's... I'm sorry. He passed away. He's gone. Yeah, she's so far gone at this no, point. No, he's not. I'm telling the truth. Did you forget again? No. Don't you dare say such things. No, no. You are a liar like all the others. Mother! Don't call me that. You aren't fooling me. No! Mommy hurts! My son would never lie. Mom, stop! Who are you? Reveal yourself! Oh my gosh. It's me, Sherlock! You are not my Sherry! Oh, dear God. That's terrifying. I mean, yeah, that's a lot to handle at any age, but yeah, when you're still growing up, Phantasma, oh my gosh. What happened? They stopped her from drowning us, but he was on the ground. Was she already dead? Yeah, I saw Mycroft pointing the gun, but I couldn't tell what happened to our mom yet. Ah, oh, we get to put together this last one. So our mom's throat was slit. So Mycroft found Otto Richter near my mother's body just after she died. And that is probably a combination of this uh, mother's throat was slit. Nope. Or this one death by hypoxia, but this one says she seemed to have suffocated. That's like contradictory. Maybe Richter's experiments? No. Okay, my mother attacked me in the garden of the manor the day she died. That one would be tied to the mental disease. Oh, Alex, so we had like a flashback of what had happened when we were a kid in the garden. And we were taking care of our mom, but then our mom started talking about uh, our dad again, who he's been dead for a while at this point. So we're trying to tell this to our mom because she's losing it. She gets really upset and attacks us. And she thinks that we're not her son. She thinks we're somebody else because her son would never lie to her like that. So she's about to drown us. And then just as we're fading away, we wake up and we see our mom on the ground dead, Richter there, the doctor, and our brother holding a gun to the doctor's head. So yeah, we don't still trying to put together the pieces. Okay, that was correct. We had a couple other ones we've already done too. Um, there was no record about my mother's death. We had a family friend, Cordona. He may know something. And Mycroft lied. Mycroft hid the truth about the death of our mother and lied when he told me that she died of tuberculosis. We know that much. So the mom tried to drown us in the pond. We just experienced that. That was crazy. Let's see, Richter's experiments and when Mycroft testified against Richter. There we go. Mycroft did not like the methods of Dr. Otto Richter and did not trust him. Oh, and then there's this one. My John and I bought my mother her mor brought our mother her morning tea the day she died. And my my mother took a dose of sedatives with her tea the day she died. So now we have two different options. Dr. Richter experimented on my mother with unconventional drugs and treatments. Every dose had a risk of side effects. Or, my mother used sedatives frequently, so her body must have built up tolerance. It wouldn't be a danger to her. I'm going to go with this one for right now, being Dr. Richter, but I'm not sure. Seriously, this is a wild dark ending. Okay, mother's throat was slit.
I thought I tried this one before, but it doesn't show up red. That she died of hypoxia, but that's like suffocating. Okay, so it's one or the other. So we can say, my mother drowned. Her throat wound could either be by a final, final humiliation. Talk. Could either be a final humiliation by her killer or a desperate attempt to save her. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Or the slit on my mother's throat was an attempted tracheotomy. Tra 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 tracheotomy? <laughs> it makes no sense to do this if she was drowning. Yeah, see, I don't know how well that would actually help if you were drowning or not. Maybe that's, you know, if the water's in your lungs and so far down, cutting a slit in your throat wouldn't actually help because that only helps if you can't breathe from here up, right? Like if you have food or something stuck in your uh, throat. I'll leave that there for now. Oh... So we have our imaginary friend, John, and mental illness. So maybe this is kind of like like father, like mom. We both suffer from mental illness. My mother's struggles with mental illness could be hereditary and affect my mind and rationality. And then just the last two, Mycroft testified against Dr. Richter and Mycroft caught Dr. Richter. So for this one, after Mycroft caught Dr. Otto Richter, he blamed him for our mother's death. All right, so we really just have to pin these two things on what we really think happened. So, did Dr. Richter experiment on my mother with unconventional drugs and treatments? Every dose had a risk of side effects. I mean, we read about that in the articles. Or, my mother used sedatives frequently, so her body must have built up a tolerance. It wouldn't be a danger to her. Hmm. And like they were trying to show us something when we were grabbing those sedatives as a kid. Like, oh, our mom needs these. I was worried they're gonna go down the path of like we actually accidentally overdosed or drugged our mom. But maybe because the doctor was giving her certain uh, me medicines and then we give her this in her tea, that might have caused something weird like that. So if we have these two connected, what is this option? It was an allergic reaction. My mother had an unexpected allergic reaction to her medication, and she suffocated. In that case, John and I are responsible. Oh, my mother died from allergic reaction after we gave her sedatives with her morning tea. Otto Richter tried to save Violet, yet Mycroft deliberately blamed him for her death, despite John and I being responsible. In which case, we could say, I killed my mother without knowing it. The idea to give her sedatives came from John, which means that I cannot trust my own mind. To heal myself, I must get rid of John. Mycroft hid the truth to protect me. Or, straight up, I killed my mother. I am responsible for my mother's death. It was my idea to give her medication, which caused the allergic reaction that killed her. It's my guilt. Mycroft hid the tr truth to protect me. Yes, absolutely shady. I always like to change these just to see what the other options are. So let's swap them both. If they contradict, you don't get that other option. Otherwise, my mother was drowned. Someone drowned my mother, either on accident or on purpose. And it all leads to Otto Richter is responsible. My mother Violet was drowned by Otto Richter. Uh, Mycroft accused him of murder, but it's unclear if Otto killed her deliberately. So deliberate murder? Otto killed my mother to end her suffering and save my life. Mycraft hid the truth to protect me and was correct in accusing Otto of impropriety, impropriety. Or it was an accident. Otto killed my mother while trying to save me. The drowning was an accident and he desperately attempted a tracheotomy to save her. Mycraft hid, hid the truth to protect me and, and wrongly accused Otto. Oh my goodness. I mean, the other option kind of has multiple blame, right? An accident and blame, because I feel like, I kind of feel like this is the path that's more truthful. This kind of makes more sense to me. And he was way overdosing our mom with all kinds of medication. And when we just gave her some simple sedatives, 
I think it probably did have a complication and caused something. So if we do go with this option, it's really sad. You can either say that John is the killer. The idea to give her sedatives came from John, which means I cannot trust my own mind. Or I killed my mother. See, that's that's crazy. Oh man, getting rid of that's like your other your other half of you, you know? That's wild. Getting rid of John or taking the responsibility ourselves. <laughs> John is always the killer. I mean, it is us. But do we need to blame us in a way that gets rid of John completely? Just like say, that's what's responsible, so we're going to get rid of that? Or are we going to say, no, we did it, and we're going to take responsibility? That's a good point, though, Holly. She didn't seem really doped up in that moment. And, and we had practically gotten killed. Now, I guess it's possible that, like, shortly after that, she just lost her breath and, you know, conked out. But it didn't seem like it would have happened immediately, right? It seemed like something actually came in there and saved us at the last second. That's a good point, though, too, Holly. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Well, well let's look at those two options again. They give you so many breadcrumbs to go through so many different motions. It's really neat. <laughs> oh, there is that point, though. Yeah, Shady, right? She said, you're not my son. I guess in that case, yeah, we were John, right? At that moment. If this was the case... I'd probably say this one, that it was an accident. Otto killed my mother while trying to save me. The drowning was an accident, and he desperately tried to uh, attempt a tracheotomy. The throat thing, which would make more sense. But then she drowned? How would you accidentally drown somebody... While trying to save somebody else, I guess. I don't know. That seems kind of crazy, too. Oh, it's it's tricky. And she was also psychotic, so who knows what was interacting with what. Very true. Very true. And, I mean, the fact that we were still alive, like, she could have had that allergic reaction, and, uh, while being all crazy, not finish the job, you know? Let's see. And he could have been uh, done the throat thing to try to save her from an allergic reaction. Oh, and that makes more sense because that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense to try to save someone from drowning by cutting in the throat. But if you have an allergic reaction and you get all stuffed up and you can't breathe, that would make more sense if it's like up in here. I just don't like the fact that it says drowning was an accident because that's, I don't think that might is really true. The drowning doesn't really make sense when you're trying to save somebody. I... Yeah, yeah, she falls in the water, just doesn't get up. But you think you would still be giving attention to her, right? If not trying to kill her. And Otto seems like an incompetent doctor, even for the times. He might have been, like, a smart doctor, but he's also seemed like he was playing God. Reading his stuff, you know? He was totally fine with doing experiments. Kind of doing whatever he wanted whether it was hurting her or not, you know? So he knew what he was doing. Seems on par for most psychiatrists. <laughs> True, Shady. If he was trying to help us because we were being drowned as well, yeah, then she could have almost drowned. I kind of like that idea better. I like your um, argument, Holly, about how she was acting at that very moment, you know? I feel like they would have given us a little bit more of a hint that something was happening to our mom. Like if she was like coughing or something like that, or even right before we lost consciousness, that might make me think, okay, maybe she did have an allergic reaction. But this kind of makes me feel like Otto maybe jumped in at the last moment. And he didn't resuscitate us though. We just saw him over our mom. Or I guess, I mean, maybe we didn't see that. Like they could have tried to help us. And when he sees that we're breathing, then trying to take care of our mom, right? 
Yeah, there's definitely some... They definitely plan this in a way where they can make you fully believe either situation. It's all up to your imagination. Hey, welcome back, Alex. Hmm. Gosh, it's like a coin flip. That's really tough. I want to believe they gave us enough breadcrumbs for me to think it's our fault. But then Holly makes a really good point in just how that was acting, how she was acting right beforehand. Doesn't seem like... Like she had just passed out, you know? And that she was overdrugged and had a reaction. Okay, you know another thing that's even weirder? Hmm. I don't feel it could be this one at all, deliberate murder, because the brother would have pinned it on him, right? Instead of saying it was... <laughs> I forget what they said it was, something else. Uh, it wasn't drowning, or murder, that's for sure. Trying to protect us. And would she have been overdrugged if we hadn't drugged her, though? And that, that could have helped cause the psychotic reaction that she had, too. Yeah, just all this stuff messing with her head, right? <laughs> yeah, thank goodness she had that allergic reaction. Oh, it's so tricky. And then I'm trying to think of, like, okay, well, how did all the information after this took place read? You know, where the our brother was trying to hide the truth from us. I don't think our brother would try to... Our brother knows the truth. And I don't think our brother would try to hide the truth from us. If it was an accident or auto. I think it was us. I think based on somebody that knows everything. That knows what happened. Dealt with the situation and swept things under the rug. I think he knows it was us. It's just, do we want to take the, do we want to take the blame or not? Yeah, he would have been a great scapegoat, right? He didn't blame Otto. You know, this John is the killer option, I almost have to pick just because of the meme, I'm always the killer. But it also feels canon. I mean, I'm not like super familiar with a lot of Sherlock stuff, but as far as I know, he doesn't usually have an imaginary friend, right? So maybe being young Sherlock, this is kind of where he gets rid of this portion of him, right? And then goes on to have other adventures without John involved. Oh, but he did blame Otto. He just attested much. But he didn't tell Sherlock. Oh, okay. I missed that part. But he was blaming him, Shady, based on the, the drugging, though. Maybe not the actual moment of death, I suppose. Just kind of calling him out as being, you know, a charlatan, I remember he said. And you think the point would be, why didn't he tell Sherlock unless he himself knew it was us? Oh, it's so hard. Oh, I love it. I love how that tough these are to choose. Yeah. Okay, just just to feed the meme, I'm going to have to go with John as the killer. How does this end up? This is your final decision. Are you sure about your choice? You will not be able to change it after confirmation. Not true. I can load the game and do it again, but I won't. Let's do it. Oof. Sherlock. Sherlock. Can you hear me? Oh no, poor John. Come on, wake up. Get off me. Sherry. You knew, and more than that, you hid it from me. You couldn't bear the truth, Sherlock, so I shouldered it for you. I took your pain, your horror. You. It was your idea that 
the sedative that was you. She was hurting us. Sherry. Oh. I, I couldn't bear to see you suffer. So you killed my mother. My worst impulses, my darkest thoughts, they're you. You were a lie, John. A fiction. A crutch. No, I was... I was a friend. Sherlock. One Please. moment, therapy. <laughs> Sherlock. The timing. What? Are you okay? I don't know. I told you not to come, Sherlock. Where is he? Who? Your friend, John. He's beside you. Was all this worth it? Is he worth it? Why, Why is, is he here? here? Whoa. I think, in his own way, he was trying to protect me from a truth I couldn't bear. But now I must face it. He's glitching out. <clears throat> whoa, 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 Sherry. What are you doing? There is only one way through. Through what? What do you mean? My entire life, my work, my mind has been compromised by a malignant force, by a perversion of rationality. By you, John. You're a tumor. You're a poison, Sherlock. And like a tumor, you must be excised for the health of the patient. No. No, this is the lie, Sherry. I protected you. I am your friend, your brother. You know me. You know me. I was always there for you. When your mother lashed out, I took the hit. When you were alone, I held you. She was sick. I just... She needed to calm down. I... I helped her. You killed her. No. Yes. No. But, but it was not meant. Please. Please. I'm scared. Does Mycroft know about John completely? so sad I mean I guess I picked it but man are you all right I I think uh, on the balance of things no that is good news to be unaffected by today's events would place you in a different pathology entirely your time on Cordona is over Sherlock Tomorrow we shall board a vessel back to London, and all this... It stays here. He's, he's gone. He's gone, Mycroft. I, I, need, I needed to take control. He, he would help me, but it was... It was a lie, because... because but he's gone. I, kn I knew he was wrong. Do you see? I am free. I just had to act. Yes. In that respect, you are your mother's son. No therapy, I'm so sorry, but in in another way of thinking about it, therapy, there are different endings and different ways you can wrap this whole thing up. So maybe not. Maybe not a spoiler. <sighs> I did get an achievement for that, but you probably get an achievement regardless of what you pick. But you know I would do the same thing. <laughs> but this mind will be a like brand new game. Closure, I suppose. Had to help a friend. You and I are not friends. In a race between the thawing of the ice caps and our friendship, I would buy a boat. Ha! 
Is that right? I can see it now. I know what you did. What did I do? You... You needled me. From the moment we met, you were searching for weakness. You pushed me to pursue the truth about my mother. You questioned everything I did, everything I believed to... to break me. To blur truth and fiction, reality, morality. A saboteur in silk. Was it vengeance for her? Or do you prefer Klaus? Excuse me? You are Klaus Richter. Ah. Uh... Do you hold me responsible for his end? Pa! There was no love lost between me and my brother. I am sure you can relate. Otto was merely the gravity that pulled me into your orbit. Or you into mine. Once I met you, I could not keep away. Why? What reason do you have for all of this? To help you. You're lying. To show you that you were wrong. More lies. I know you now, Werner. Try again. To see what had happened. Or is that yet another untruth? Does it matter? Take your pick. Who cares? You're my masterpiece. I turned Sisyphus into Ozymandias. You could not see the futility of your quest. Until I helped you to let go of the rock. And now... Nothing beside remains. I remain. Despite you, and to spite you. Screw it this guy. It is a guy. matter of will and power now. Will you overcome this, or shall you decay? Oh, on that note, I brought you something. I want nothing more from you. When one wants for nothing, Sherlock, the best thing to get them is something personal. So, here you are. Now, please excuse me, but the gallery calls. I'm already conceiving my next project. Burn it. <laughs> Just burn it. Don't even look at it. You really are beautiful. Put that above our fireplace. Oh, man. What? A crazy ending. I am all right. I returned to London and enrolled at Cambridge University. Their professors leave something to be desired, or perhaps I simply lack the interest in all but a few lectures. I prefer to spend my time at the local hospital pursuing things of practical use. Medical research, chemical tests and the like. Empirical truths. I try not to think about you. Aww. I try not to think about anyone unless it is in the course of an investigation. I've started to help people with their menial mysteries. It keeps the mind occupied. I cannot risk otherwise. I'm not like her. I'm not like you. I am all right. Dang. Not what I expected at all. I found it! I found it! And what is that? How far, um, bruises may be produced after death? How are you? You have been in uh, Afghanistan, I perceive. How on earth did you know that? Uh, never mind. The, um, the question now is about bruising. No doubt you see the significance of this discovery of mine. Uh, it is interesting, no doubt, but practically... Uh... Why, it is the most practical medico-legal discovery for years. Had we these data sooner, hundreds of men would have paid the penalty for their crimes. Cases oft hinge upon how a man died. Now... We can know which wounds he suffered alive, which occurred post-mortem, and what instrument was responsible. And ergo, one will soon be able to calculate with utmost precision when and where death occurred, sparing the innocent and damning the guilty. That's pretty impressive. Uh, then you are to be congratulated. Indeed. But uh, uh, you came here on business. <laughs> Correct again. 
I, I am looking for someone with whom to take diggings and heard you were complaining that you could get no one to go halves with you. I have my eye on a suite in Baker Street, which would suit us down to the ground. You don't mind the smell of strong tobacco, I hope? I smoke ships myself. That's uh, good enough. I get in the dumps at times and don't open my mouth for days on end. Just let me alone and I'll soon be right. What have you to confess now? It's best for two fellows to know what bruises each other carries before they begin to live together. My last companion and I... Well, I object oh. to rouse because my nerves are shaken. And I get up at all sorts of ungodly hours. <laughs> and I am extremely lazy. I have another set of vices when I'm well. But those are the principal ones at present. Do you include violin playing in your category for rout? <laughs> it depends on the player. A well-played violin is a treat for the gods. A badly played one. Oh, oh no, that's all right. I think we may consider the thing as settled. Oh, uh, forgive my manners. My attention wavers. Sherlock Holmes. Dr. John Watson. John. <laughs> There's Watson. John. But Watson. Oh, that was really cool. I really actually, as sad as that was and hard to watch at times, that was actually a really clever and interesting ending that the entire story kind of did Phantasma. Great pick. That was actually a really cool game.